Damn, TN number one KDA? Yeah, it makes sense. Dude, Croco is, uh, I don't know. He's a curious player. I mean, he was playing well at like some points, but then he just plays some really awful games. Lately, he's just been terrible. Played 15 champions in the jungle. Why is Krakos playing so many champions? Wait, has he really played 15 champions? I mean, I remember his Poppy, Graves, Xin Zhao, Maokai. Didn't he play Kindred game? Viego, he's played Viego. Volibear, he played a Kindred game, it was bad. What is meta right now in the jungle? Hold on. Like, what could you play? Braves, Kindred, Leeson, Viego, Brand. Was it was meta earlier? Nocturne, Maokai, Rel, Juani, then All Bear. Jax Poppy, uh, Jax Poppy, Jarvin, bye. Wukong Trundle is also viable. There's a lot of junglers you can pick. A lot of them aren't that good. Who's messaging me? Bro, I gotta grind. After these games on in, in LPL, I'm gonna grind. It's time, bro. Lolitics. All right, let's see it. Let's see it. Does AL do anything? Think about AL that sucks so much for them is that their game score is just terrible. So there's a pretty good chance they don't make playoffs, bro. There's a pretty good chance they don't make playoffs. If they don't win this, they're not making it. If they're not, if they don't win this, they straight up just are out. Everything's already decided. They're just straight up out if they don't win this. How would Thunder Talk even be able to make it, actually? Wait, isn't playoffs just already decided? Am I missing something? How can Thunder Talk make it into playoffs? Oh, I guess I guess if they 2-0, if Thunder Talk 2-0s and WE goes 0-2, then they're both minus four game score. And Thundershot Gaming beat WE, which is the head-to-head. -head. So then, so Thundershot could tie up the game score versus WE, potentially. I mean, I guess W, I, I guess AL could lose, win one game. No, no, if they, if they lose and win one game, they're out. <clears throat> yeah, it's straight up. Straight up, AL loses, they're out. Because their game score is just unrecoverable. Even if they lose 2-1. Dom, I want you to start your morning right. So I'm asking you if you saw the thread that Shao is EU peanut. EU peanut. The fuck does that even mean? I don't even see any similarities between Shao and peanut. Like peanut's biggest strengths are like early pathing and like game understanding. 
Cheo's biggest strengths, I guess, are like team, like his best, his biggest strength is maybe team fighting. All right, so it's Nico Nocturne. I'm down with Nico Nocturne. A little bit old school, but I think Nocturne's better now. I don't hate it as much as I hated it before. Like any champion that builds Stridebreaker in the jungle, I'm much more fond of than I was before. Also, I might be delusional, but I think Rek'Sai is just good. Rek'Sai is just good again. How many wins does the team need to pull off a Miracle Run? I mean, they just have to... Like, to me, a Miracle Run means that, like you're completely down in the standings and you have to like string together a series of wins, like significantly more than you already have um, in order to make it to playoffs. So you have to be like a team who's like one in nine or like one in 10 and then you string together wins. Like if there was a miracle run in LPL, like if TT started out, they were like one in seven, one in eight, and then they ended up making playoffs. That to me would have been a miracle run because it's like a miracle that you lose the majority of your i mean you you lose pretty much all of your early series and then you're able to like win any series let alone like six seven in a row but like in in lec they just call everything a miracle run they're like and this team has made a miracle run into playoffs which is top eight of the fucking league it's top eight of the fucking league make playoffs a miracle run in playoffs to go from uh, one and seven to two and seven. They've now made playoffs. Congratulations. What a miracle. They doubled their wins. It's like, come on, bro. Holy shit. The miracle run into playoffs. The last week of regular season, they went from one win to three wins. Now they made playoffs. Congratulations. Miracle run. Okay, Cree Macaulay. Cree Macaulay with Nico support. I'm fucking down. I'm down for a Cree Macaulay classic. It does not look like an easy Akali game. Varys, Annie, Renekton. But Cream can make it work. He's going to drop a fucking nuke, isn't he? <clears throat> <clears throat> Thorns tweak a meadow is a problem is a banger. Yep. I mean, this is just like a this is an aware moment for Kometo because it's like, wait, I thought Yamato was the issue on the team, but the team is arguably worse. Like, dude, I would say that this team is actually worse than the team in winter. 
like before they had more um like rookie mistakes and like really bad laning performances i would say where like that makes the game so much harder to win but now they're like they're in even better position somehow because people are just laning at a more acceptable level and they just run it down regardless I mean, Sokken is so overrated, bro. Sokken might be, like, one of the most overrated players I've ever seen. Like, he is literally the worst mid laner in LEC. And people hyped him up like he would be one of the best. It's crazy. And by people, I mean, like, K-Corp fans, obviously. So I think it's the end of Bo's career if K-Corp bench him? No? Why would it be the end of Bo's career? You think no one is going to be willing to take a chance on Bo? Out of all the players on the K-Corp lineup, you think if Bo ends up getting benched, no one is going to want to take a chance on a player like that? Why is the game audio not playing? Hold on. Oh, this just randomly deselected. Alright, here we go. So it's up to Jackie to Jackie Love and Mako to actually create Roster making an EU is fucked. Sure. So that Nocturne can get to clear up through his jungles. Through his jungle camps really quickly. I don't know, bro. Try to get the level six like, as I, I think that's possible. Because Bo exactly showed enough, even though he's like playing like worse now. He had played like a bad Jarvan game yesterday. He showed enough in this split that people are going to still be willing to take a chance on him in the future. And I still would argue he's he's literally just the best player on the team. Even if he's playing worse than he did in winter, like who's better than Bo on that team? So, very very good start. Yes. Jackie Love. I mean, it's all just tickety boo. As I say, good CS. He misses his CS, which is always somewhat amusing. But yeah, AL, they're going to struggle for the first couple of levels. It's once those abilities come online that Rakan and uh, the Barris can start to do a little bit more. And uh, obviously, there was a ward. In okay. The for AL. That's a kill. Uh, all in um, onto hope. Oh, my God. Jackie oh. Love's time the tower. Damn. Damn. Okay. Jackie Love is a psychopath. Oh. Okay. Kale gets the auto gets the cue to finish the answer. i mean but in the meantime still good i guess the crash this massive wave hope loses everything how much does he get of it he loses the cannon i mean it's still good it's still good we'll take it level two ends up dying uses both his summoners all four summoners used for the side of al and you they lose so much experience on their ad carry plus yes you see that mako is staying behind making sure that kale cannot Freeze that wave off the tower and let's watch this one more time. The root, the e land. What the hell is Mako. happening? Absolutely huge. Don't worry about that video. I'll tell huge you what happened. Play is Mako. still in the lane. Unbelievable. Yep. Mako oh, they're just pausing. E. They dive onto it. We're going to have a little bit of a pause. But it was... We said it's going to be just about Jackie Love and Mako trying oh, to might get be the second best player on the team. Down the I mean, I don't know, bro. Hey, Nocturne, I, I don't know who's second best. Right now. He's trying to get to the level six. I mean, the, the thing is, like, even when Bo plays a bad game, he still gets them ahead. He puts them in positions to win. Like, I, I think that over time, I've realized that Sokken is just the worst player on the team. Oh, I don't know what the, the, what the uh, pause is for, but top esports absolutely vibing. Etienne is just jamming out. Is at very least. And uh, he's like, yeah, my bot lane's winning. I have to do nothing. I'm not getting invaded. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, let's just talk about that bot lane as well, because I feel like, you know, obviously Jackie of grabbing himself the kill is very nice. Denying all that CS is very nice. And it's one of those things where when you trade kills, a lot of the time people are unsure on the value. Like when you've got a big wave like that. So Sagan should be replaced over a target must? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Sagan just doesn't know what his job is in in, in fights. Like his his Nico plays were were absolutely terrible. Like he can't he doesn't play any he doesn't play any class of champion properly. Like and that just shows to me that he has zero game knowledge.
but actually like when he's playing karma he's just he lets people enter for free he like max range monster cues and then runs away like he has no idea how to like hold his own and like how to poke when he plays nico he doesn't know how to flank he doesn't know how to engage like he doesn't actually do anything well his laning is not good like his laning sometimes is serviceable in matchups where you just like throw your spells at the wave and even farm it's like an npc can do that at this point his assassin play on akali was terrible his zero play was bad in tifa like he's literally just bad like what does he do well what does he do well a fantastic showcasing of early game power onto the Kalista from uh, the top esports bot lane. Great poke coming out from Jackie Love here. He'll weave forwards, get an auto on a minion, hit the enemy a couple of times, and then. But he's French. He is French. Minion, and it means that you still get the mana refund. You still get the. Chews gum well. Reset, nah, he doesn't even do that well, bro. The enemy out. He's bad at chewing gum too. Nice stuff from Jackie Love. Possible, so bro. In this lane. Obviously, CS lead. Not quite as big as you would hope, Why is honestly, there an English Jack cast again, bro? If you still are struggling to figure out what's going on in, in, with, with the English and Chinese broadcast, I don't know what to tell you, bro. I've spoke about it 50 million times. There's articles online. You can literally just research on the fandom for like two seconds. Look at the LPL casters Twitter. Like you could do so. Like if you can't figure it out at this point, it's just GG, bro. Like you're never going to get it. And he's got no health. Jackula finishing his second kill of the game. There's a command for it, like uh, off of that level two kill. Basically, the lane bounces. They can never crash it. They need their jungler. The jungler is top lane. He's doing void grabs. Now it's just GG, bro. Void grab he didn't it show is up GG. Bot lane, uh, skirmish. So it's all going down here for AL and top esports bot lane again, as dominant as ever. Thanks. I'll ask you again tomorrow. Nice, bro. No summoners. Look at where the wave is. Slowly pushing Mako with the flash E yet again. Get another root. Capitalize on the fact that there is no flash or cleanse or anything on this virus. Yeah. And now that Kalista 2 and 1 monstrous almost double CS on the virus. Kale's like, right, I've got to get out of this lane. I've got to do something elsewhere. But fortunately, that's an Akali in the mid lane. Akali, notoriously pretty hard to gank. As Tib is actually going to come out from Shanks as well to try and bully Cream Ooh, that's very out of the lane. TP not available for Cream, so he's going to have to try and walk his way back in. I don't know if he found some honey fruit. He's kind of just chilling that in the river. That was very, very clever right there, because if you look at AL, they're dipping towards the bot side river. They may be trying to free up some space and some time to try and get a dragon going for themselves. As you will see, again, the bot lane wave is pushing, so now they need to get Annie towards that bot side of the map to try and secure potentially a wave crash, but they cannot. The second they step up, Mako just takes 50% of that Rakan's health. Yeah, nice try for AL. Tib is going to time out in the mid lane as well, and that means Cream now has ult advantage and yes shanks has more health okay shuriken not quite there but there's always threat from that akali especially from cream you know cream i'm gonna hold that thought kale goes in in the bottom side Mako's just dead Maru comes out from Mako, one hp and take it down croco losing for Tavi sports is here too but level five nocturne ain't bringing much to a fight Might have flash. w comes in hope getting some damage down as jackal trying to thanks is here too they get pressured off the wave okay pretty good for al make sure this play works for al i was a little bit too over aggressive they knew that croco was towards the bolts out of the map but mako is super squishy on the nico gets knocked up and absolutely annihilated by the virus plus Zinza, we get to see this again. You see that top esports are, are just basically walking through the wave. They don't have the advantage they did before. They have no. Yeah, Nocturne is just fucking useless around. until six. So, so is Nico kind of. Nico is gonna poke in lane. Any of these all ins, that, uh, just gonna lose. Exchange as well, which means that the old flash follow up is not going to be likely for. Coming to the LEC studio though, anytime, or is Mad Lions fans to hustle? I just don't know when I would want to go to the TM's studio to be honest. Six very 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 near so once again Tien's gonna try to clear his top side towards bot and try to potentially go for a dive level six he's gonna take that smite off of croco oh good spell shield as well on the w means that croco can't follow up could have potentially looked for ulti onto um available. shanks there when shanks was walking back shanks last second there blocks the damage he could have went on that with cream as uh moves back definitely an lane. angle that when andy's like not of the lane having a second there to hit the minion wave doesn't happen often in this lane i can tell you that 
<laughs> Absolutely not. As an Akali, you, you tend to get bullied uh, from a lot of uh, the mages in the mid lane. And Annie is a mage that's very self-sufficient as well. A lot of the movement speed and shielding coming in from from the E is very, very useful. You've got so many tools, like literally point-click stun to keep Akali in place and get to trade with the uh, with the huge range that you have through the auto attacks and the airy. Cream now, Ooh. ultimate online. I, I swear, I'll, I will always be confused with Nikos. I'm like, wait, Nocturne's... Oh, Nocturne's not good. Okay. No, that is Mako. Mako baiting and outsmarting here. 369. Even me. On his Everyone. Trade Even this, bro. On. We've got an all-in on the top side. Knockback comes on through. No, it's not an all-in. I'm misreading. You know what, Munch? Probably might go over ult there. One of these days, you need to try and play by play the top lane fight. Which you know is not going to result in a kill, you know? Yeah, the problem is I've done that by accident. Who's staying KC and pray to make roster changes or leave <laughs> LEC for LCS? I mean, you just to do it whatever the best opportunity is. Nine. Like, I mean, just a bit of not like uh, it's not like every LCS team there. is the same. I'm not sure that was worth a flash. No one that it's not like he just has infinite there. opportunities. Like, bro, these either or questions actually kill me. We're talking about if they want to take a fight towards the void grubs on the top side of the map for AL. However, AL have taken a back seat right here. They're trying to scale up. They do have on hit powers, which means the later on you go in the game, the better it is for you. And giving you a lot of the sustain as well with the shields and the movement speed through it. A lot of zoning, if you want, tools from the Rakan and the Annie and the Zinza. However, the longer the game goes, uh, that Renekton in the top lane is not going to be as useful as you would expect in the early to mid stages of the game so we're gonna see if they're gonna use harry anytime soon to try and sort of pin down a few advantages in the early game t and has found himself cow but it's not going to be a case of we're diving here it's more like hey we're zoning off hope from the tower yeah. hope has been having a very miserable game man. The, the entire, i don't think he's seen many creeps the entire game plan for top esports is just deny hope anything here he's already died twice he's 30 cs down as jackie love will pick up yet more turret plates this callista is monstrous okay However, like five man uh, dive top lane gg 369 i guess you're just dead how dodge entirely he's gonna join in on a top lane dive play how often he is just gonna see five people in his lane it's a five man play on three he just got five man dove at 11 minutes nice we expecting that something was going to happen on the map and since you're bullying virus out of the entirety of the bot side well he has to find a way to get back into the game i actually do not mind this from al because if you look at mid and bot none of these lanes are pushing so they found an opening where top esports are having the resets none of them is on the map and they're trying to get their virus a little bit back online a couple of tire platings went down a well he feels good yep onto the virus, nice trying to earn back what has been lost through the bot side of the map i really like that movement play right here from al and as you can see right 369 absolutely did not expect maybe he expected two people in this brush but five absolutely not yeah hope moved up to the top side jackie love has swapped to answer as well but hope did manage to get a couple of turret plates before top esports arrived here still two minutes until those plates are down and we're back into that same 2v2 just on the top side of the map now so still top esports Managing to answer, but AL have themselves. They fucking goal. save her. Yep, he should have respected. Honestly, it's quite a feat. Not many GG to him, bro. Gold leads against Not respecting. Kind of cringe. Three six nine. I thought you were supposed to be a good weak side player. You were on the weak side there, bro. You were on the weakest side we had. You died. Kind of sucks, bro. Kind of sucks. Contesting such a dominant early game team. And sure, we talked about how they needed to use the Renekton from early on out. Right here, they're looking for Jackie Love. Croco has sneaked into the pixel brush. There are flashes available. Jackie Love. Okay. Pop Blossom will deny the order. EPs. Mako now caught with the fates. Croco first. To knock up onto Croco instead as Cream looking to finish off. Croco. So unlucky, bro. So Holy speed, fuck. Away from the flash from Cream, and now Cream's gone in too deep. Knocked up. Root comes out from Mako, but it's not just too far. He can't ult. Oh, there he goes. Shanks with the kill, but oh, this is ugly. TN, but it's one v four. Shanks one shots. Bro, there. It's, this is the. This is just like the most tragic sequence of events. Oh my god. So miscoordinated by Tess. AL are catching them asleep. The gank on the top side. Tia joining into late cream. Yeah, this is why people don't play a Kali. Meanwhile, Harry Couldn't kill this Zinjo with zero mar from like half health. 
and Shanks on that Annie has picked up three kills for himself putting himself so far now the game is absurdly hard for them because they don't even scale yes, well the play was going to hit it was right there right then there are flashes of course on Jackie Love he flashes the initial engage from the Rakan but the W does end up hitting really lovely Ult right there from Mako to try and zone away everyone else and Green dives that is crazy bro zone. that's crazy that doesn't execute there it, but it's not necessarily going to be the case Q, like Q flash, passive proc R from like, like a quarter oh, HP like, didn't kill? Then he just wants to deny vision. But it's not the case. He dives in one versus four. Takes the flash from home. I mean, he still had flash. At what cost? Had to give the play. Up going down, I'm so surprised the Kali just doesn't have damage and to right kill. Now, look at the inventory of the Annie. Look at the inventory of the Zinza. Look at the inventory of the Crocodile. They all hurt so much. It wasn't about hope. Hope is going to scale. They're just giving the kills to all of the champions that are going to get them to that play game. So well played by AL here. And honestly, top esports, like you say, just not coordinated. I feel like Tien, you saw him like running up towards top, but he started running. This is an impossible lane for Cream to be in. Also, I feel like the communication was maybe that he's on the way, but he just has to try to push like, lane and leave. Nocturnal can get you this early in the game. It's a great play for AL. And this is the kind of coordination we've been waiting to see. Five grubs. I mean, it's looking really good for AL. Looking like they can win it easily at this point. Streak. They have been really struggling the last few weeks. Tabe's come in, and it feels like suddenly the macro is picking up a little bit. The gameplay looking okay for AL so far. Challenging top esports in the early game, and I want to throw a statistic at you. It's a statistic I throw every single top esports series. When they're ahead at 15 minutes, they've got a 100% win rate. But guess what? When they're down at 15 minutes, they have not won a single game this split. They are 4,000 gold down at this point, and AL statistically poised to take game one. And remember what It'd be huge if top esports losses. Losses. If, if top esports loses. If top esports loses one of their next two series. Dive in the back and the JDG fight. wins today. Then JDG just gets um, second seed and they miss around or they skip a round of playoffs. They skip three rounds technically, but they skip one more round. Whereas if Top Esports ends up winning their series, their game score is just going to carry them and they will be the ones over JDG that make top two. No flash on this guy. There's one. There's one. In the mid lane. Look at the damage coming out from Tien. There's the follow up. Mako finishes the job. Bro. His tibbers. This Nocturne fucking disappeared. One one. What the fuck? Uh, it's an AD carry for a jungler. But in the meantime, 369 takes a tower. Bro, he actually just got one tapped. Matter, this virus has been Holy moly. Game. He is not your target right here. 4 0 and 1. Shanks on that Annie building towards our Banshees as well. It's going to be so difficult to pin down later on. And top esports are trying to find ways, but again, this was not coordinated. This is why we mentioned a potential combo combo, right? With something like an Oriana guaranteed to hit. Part here again, Tian flies in on his own. Ends up paying the price. They do trade one for one. Who's JDG's mid laner? I don't know who JDG's mid laner right is. Hold on, let me let me see how long it takes to figure it out. Where's JDG? Oh, their mid laner is a gal. Tien is just too far ahead. Jackalope cannot join in on this fight. Mako cannot join in on this fight. And when the T burst goes down and he gets pinned under tower, it's just too late. It's literally that easy, by the way. Tien starting the year as one of the best junglers in the league. And then randomly is unironically that easy. <laughs> Name a better duo. Um, yeah, tough game from Tien here on the Nocturne. Honestly, it feels like he's not on the same page as the team. I do wonder how much preparation realistically Top Esports put into I mean, to be honest, maybe I shouldn't do that because maybe the viewers that are watching me don't have internet. Good ultimate on the Jackie Love. And honestly, it's not an easy ultimate to hit a lot of the time against Callista, but just finds his angle. Asking was even easier though. It's that literally not. Huge. It's actually just two clicks versus like having to type to in a chat and then pray for a response. Be able to insta -cleanse yourself uh, Harry flashes Ooh, there. Flash 369 doesn't. Good start. Uh, wait, 369 yeah. is randomly rich as fuck. What? He has two items? Even at the sideline here is Shanks. Push this wave. The fact that he's already got MR online means it's really difficult for Cream to significantly threaten. And Croco's up on that top side as well. Oh, Tian was not having it, bro. Away with his life. He was not having that play. Goes right for top esports, and I mean, this is a team that should be contending for 
taking the league, taking the championship right now. That is, it doesn't feel like the team we're watching. Yeah, they absolutely look a little bit lost on the map. Grown ass yeah. man crying about answering a simple question. Grown ass man not oh, able to Google a simple Rune question. Not not well able to find an answer to a simple question himself. Finally goes down three six nine grabbing that. Say it both ways. Finally one of the Also, I'm not really crying about it. I'm just showing that it's like Yeah, Cal couldn't yeah. even believe it that the that it is uh, that easily and achievable so to Cal find the answer. Presses heel. And, and also, like, getting no, asked buddy, simple questions fighting. nonstop is mentioned. pretty fucking boring when, when it comes to off, being a streamer. As well. Now, of course, the difficult part will be that you like, do have I would rather try to have like some type of reasonable have discussion rather than just ask or answer the now, most simple questions see, that are easily Googleable over and over again, and then have this worthless conversation. To facilitate for Jackalov and Mako, but with the press of a button, you can be on any side. That's personally what I what I'm trying to to get to, but it just it will never happen. Probably people will just our people are so conditioned to just asking worthless questions over and over again. Pressure, which they have been very well known for, then they can very easily just basically spread AO because we have TikTok brain rot. Gg. See a lot of their big fights, a lot of the big skirmishes have been around Shanks. So Why Banshee's against Nocturne? Of the map, you can very easily uh, I mean, it's it's not great, but it's also not terrible. I mean, the way that some people view it is when Nocturne ults, you, you still get like the ability to see everything. So it's not like completely worthless into Nocturne. And then the MR is good versus Kali is kind of how he's viewing it. See, like that question, I'd much rather answer, you know? the damage on this AL composition, obviously. Renekton's in Zao gonna bring a bit of AD. Got Shanksu because he's so far. It's definitely a way more thought provoking question. Than you typically expect from an Annie. But it does feel like Hope being put behind does slow down the composition from AL. They're realistically looking to scale up a little bit, but honestly, against a, against a Callista composition as well, you're kind of okay with that. You're kind of okay with playing a little bit slower. Hmm, answer a viewer's question was well, helping you grow or the sit there in silence. Callista is gonna look. What? I mean, it's not like it's not like I have to be. It's not like those are the only two options. <laughs> I could answer a different question. Nocturne's a bruiser, but then you have Akali, Kalista, and Nico. I could talk about the game. There's multiple different things. Also, the like idea that like a streamer is super indebted to every single viewer because they're watching a stream is just like, yeah, it's not something that I abide by. Hey, pretty good fight here. Knocked away though, keeps himself safe. Flash away. Dogger's going on Croco, but no one can really follow. The Nico ult is big. Can they kill Renekton? Renekton has Sterex, bro. Renekton's gonna kill everyone. He's just unkillable. He's the goat. I mean, I just feel like if they ever are going on Croco, it's not gonna be winning. Oh, this guy's dead as hell. So is Jackalov. Game's over. That shadow is banished as hope looks for revenge for the leaning phase. But is the live show starting? I don't know. I can open my window and figure out. Team fight from AL. And figure out if he's doing it yet. For them, they're gonna take that second dragon of the game. And you said we said at the very beginning, hey, use that Renekton, and use that early to mid game power spike that you've got with a very fed Annie with the Renekton on two items, and they did just that. They seem to engage on 369. Okay, 369 is fine. He's the tankiest member uh, on the side of top esports, but a very, very nice. Look, keep your eyes on Cream right here because he very sleekly tags his E onto the Renekton and then takes it back to dodge the Rakan. But everything after this just goes south for top esports. I mean, they would have to be one shotting Annie here. Like, the Renekton is actually so absurdly tanky. He's got a Sterax completed. 369 takes him out, almost takes 369 out with him. And from there on out, it's been top esports trying to run for the hills. If you do not kill Shanks with the initial engage, Shanks will kill your entire team. This team is doing so much work in that fight. It's all just chasing them down. I think it's more like if you don't kill the 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 Renekton. If you go on the Renekton, you don't kill him in the in the engage. Then your whole team is dead. Because you do not have the consistent and damage so advantage. Good to see because we start this split looking at this roster saying, hey, this has potential. Damn, they gave Cream as a collie and they just picked Annie into it, which sounds miserable for a collie, to be honest. Have shown real potential in their own right. And it felt like halfway through the split, that hope, that aspiration was ripped away from them. 
but now you haven't seen the champion nocturne win in so long really it hasn't been winning i feel like it's been winning more than losing recently let's check let's look at lpl absolutely such a crucial game for them very crucial game from top esports as well who are going to pull tp right, they, they gotta try to go on shanks it's impossible bro game is lost who's excited is getting one shot i mean pretty good ult from him one man pop loss and croc no can't win cream trying to threaten on the top side ults out one pick for the side of top esports but can they escape croco now chasing cream still on that top side they've got to be careful of that akali but just the all-in on to jackie love he backs away trying going to on to shanks he's alive. Going in, but CN dives the backside. okay Kelsey cream walks away as hope is taken down three six nine doing just snuck into the bush they get baron here bro ain't no way and top esports do it again. No way they a steal this shit. Look like a team fight that was not going their way. They're going to start the Baron because even though the health bars are super low, it's only a single Rakan that remains from the side of AL. And how, how does top esports always come back? And right now the threat is huge. Just an outplay, bro. Cream was too smart. DP. Both the Cassante and the Akali. I am very surprised that 369 didn't get killed here. Because he had no W or anything. He was just able to rip the Renekton out. And then W. Absolutely uh destroyed and then cream now, here was just smart the sitting in the bush because as jackie love and make are trying to run away cream will pull towards the top side of the map and everybody thinks it's on jackie and they just they, they just here. funneled into jackie love for no reason not have flash, he can't overextend so he focuses his fear on there knowing that cream is playing with him and cream just flashed the, the q Absolutely with three stacks on him immaculate coordination to take the heat off of them chasing jackie love towards the bot side incredible yep. team fight by top esports couple of misplays as well from al where you saw kale using his quickness right at the start of the fight not really getting any value out of that one but also harry diving onto top esports while 369 dives on al if harry just commits to the death there like actually 369 doesn't get away either they trade top laners but because harry tried to move back to his team bro all the shutdowns and everything now you're just ahead you have a baron buff there's turrets on the map no way this game is winnable right that's crazy to me hard to see that when you're harry in that situation but ends up giving 369 the ticket to safety there and now out of nowhere top esports are back in the lead in this game cream now could be in trouble croco threatens in the bottom side but with tn here and with the W missing, has to back away. Drake's like a five-man Baron too, so you can pressure all three lanes. One for top esports would tie up at two and two for Drakes. And this is where it starts getting. And three six nine ended up to just ended up just going Jock show this game, which is really smart. He just looks absurdly rich to me. I don't know. I guess Renekton just base and bought a profane, so I guess they're both on three items. It just looks kind of crazy. A giga tank basically on the other side of the map against you and the rest of the damage spread across the team and he got so top tier too that can kill a tank like Asante. this drake should just be for those squishes, all top esports e zero onto them and it's just going to be hope that's going to be mainly auto attacking that Asante trying to take him down and hope he's the one member that has been absolutely bullied the entire game he's not where he wants to be in terms of itemization as you can see yeah. at least there's an entire item up on him so this is the time where top esports can start actually contesting more so does it really go terminus so second uh some people go terminus second some people go ginsu second just depends everyone always talks about Callista scaling but when you're an item ahead the scaling conversation doesn't really come into play too badly i mean i guess terminus was buffed i still don't think this is like a giga free game for top esports honestly because the combo still lose. Is there. Like, the combo is obvious for AL, right? With the Rakan, with the Annie. The Profane so OP as fuck. I mean, Profane is a good age, item. Like AOE burst I mean, on Renekton at this point in the game, I'm not sure how good it is. And the ultimate onto the target. That feels great for AL. The problem is. I mean, I guess if you're playing just to, like, try to one shot the Callista or something, to find the it could be good. It's just kind of strange on Renekton because the way that you use item actives generally like Tiamat item actives is to break you out of your W animation But Profane is 
better used as a uh, like finishing item, right? Because it does more damage when somebody's under 50% health. So unless your W, or unless the person's already chunked, like doesn't seem like it's as insane on Renekton as it is on other champions like Aatrox, for example. And right here we mentioned how A, Akali is going to be unlocked on a side lane. Cassante is already unlocked onto a, si onto a side lane. He's one level up onto Harry. He's one uh, almost item up onto that Renekton as well. So having the double threat on the two side lanes, if that Annie overextends, she's very, very squishy. When do I leave you? Uh, the 16th. Doctrine, and then you're playing four versus five with the biggest threat of AL being dead. Top esports could definitely take them up. That's why you see that Shanks needs the assistance of Croco to walk inside the jungle and always stays underneath the tower to try and farm up and push out yeah. the wave, which is not necessarily what you want to be doing with this fed Annie. You want to be popping that cleanse off of Jackie Love to try and get a huge t in these team fights. Let's see if Shanks can find it. It's a player that has been a little hit, hit or miss this year. His RE recently, I remember having a couple of awkward games but generally speaking i'd say shanks is a, a pretty trustworthy mid laner to have your lead especially on a champion like annie where realistically fairly easy to uh get your value if you've got your flash available and your tips available often fairly simple and so far so good from him today let's hope that he can keep that up but three thousand gold lead now for top esports that Baron being used so effectively. It's one of the things that I think is really I think Proto Belt is a trash item. I don't like the item. I don't build it on anything, bro. I guess it has its place, but unless I'm playing something very specific where I have a Proto Belt interaction, I just don't like the item. Talking about Baron, there's another one coming up in about 25 seconds. He's going to be the next neutral objective spawning on the map and why i dislike the situation that AL have found themselves in is because annie is literally sitting there trying to absorb all the side waves pushing into al what shang should be looking for right here is maybe catch jack i mean what's happening around this baron Freeman's is level 17 i mean he's actually strong now he looked useless in this game i mean he doesn't do damage to react in but anyone else he can actually do damage now so making sure that you take at least one of the two summoners off. Fane Hydra proc, okay. Cream off the map, but it's not going to be the case. Yeah, he's oh, yeah. just W, but the Taking shroud. one of the two summoners. Yeah, the shroud keeps. Well, there's no there. way that fucking Nocturne has a steel sigil in his inventory. I hate that fucking item. They've got to try and do something about it. Croco moving over to get vision. Control ward in the back of the pit. Trying to force some action. The thing is, this is not great from TN because, like, Cream is not in conditions where he wants to TP. Cream is going to try to base. So it's like, why are we hitting this? Actually, why are we hitting this? I mean, I think that we're trying to get the TP off of Harry right there, but Harry held on to that trigger for a little bit. They were trying to see from the side of AL if Top Esports is actually going to commit to this Baron. But there's a more important. Well, for now, at least. Something looks like killable. I'm not sure why he built a Randuins, though. I mean, I guess he just kind of viewed it as like, what other armor item do I buy? I mean, I think at this point, like, with the amount of armor that he had, I could see there being an argument for, um... Ah, uh, this is not good. I could see there being an argument for building an Anathemas and putting it on Varus. I think that actually could be pretty good in this game. Is that the person with consistent damage that could kill you? And you already have armor and MR. They, they don't have crit, so your randoms is, like, not that good. I guess your other items are, are just, like, standard... Armor Once items like goes down, it's Frozen Heart, very, very Unending Despair. I don't like building randoids generally if they have no crit. This is how I view it. And I don't think he needs necessarily like a ton more armor. Anathema's on, on Varus could be really good this game. The paranoia right here is huge for TNS. He's the primary sort of vision taking and engage for the set of top esports they're gonna try to start the baron to try and lure al in but al are just not taking the bait back to back blue ward used there as well so that'll be on cooldown as crocker gets absolutely chunked by cream Chunk from cream top esports knocked her old soon control of mid al managed to get mid prior and i think that's the 
one of the reasons stopping sports peeled away to they get a sure play into baron here not losing too much and now they move in to gain control once again complete vision dominance of the baron pit you see croco has moved over to the drake though top esports either need to start this baron or they need to is cream gonna actually go bot here they can go for the drake you just gonna tv back up top insta let's see now al have to respond yeah, I feel like Doppy's working to Where's he end up TPing? Right I feel like he's got to probably just TP on this pink board here. I mean, he could try to flank TP, I guess, with Nocturnal. Croco is right here and he's looking for a way in. This is like infinite Ren stacks on the Baron Jack. Nocturnal and TP? So long. I mean, Nocturnal, right? High HP they can execute it from. It's two Where's the Nocturnal, bro? Kind of late. Jackie Love is dead. Cream can't really kill frontline. 369 was just trying to zone. Hope didn't end up doing anything. Mm. I feel like this was just like so uncoordinated. Like, was this a turn? What was this? And they end? Probably not. It's probably just Baron and Drake. I feel like a Nocturne ulted so late here. And like they should have been trying to turn immediately. Like here they need to start like looking for a turn if they're turning. Everyone and their moms pile I mean, Tia just doesn't ult. Like, Lowe. by the time he you ults, he's like, they, the fight's already happening. Like, he, they don't get any value out of the vision. Denial. Everyone on AL can see everything they need to see. Back into the pit for Tian. And then the rest is just history. It's a four versus three. Pull the side uh, in favor of AL. And Tian is also not even there yeah. to try and defend or play the team fight again. A great pickup from AL. We mentioned how both LPL Adems. What does that mean? Team fights. Well, neither nor actually helped him survive this one. Hope is basically a turret at this point as well on this Varus. Got to four items. You see Jack Show picked up by Jack. I love to try and survive the burst damage that will come through from the side of AL. Try and withstand some of these team fights. But it's hard on this Callista. We'll see if he's got what it takes, and we'll see if AL are able to continuously find him because they've been doing a great job of it so far. And that's three Drakes now for AL. It's the Baron taken as well. And the gold back in their favor once more. We are going to have one of those classic LPL gold graphs this game, I fear. Hey, all I know is what you told me from the beginning, okay? If Tess is ahead of 15 minutes, they end up winning the game. Tess was not ahead at 15 minutes. They didn't take the... You know what? Sheen loves the... Hey, if Tess takes the first uh, tower in the game... Did both junglers build so something right? other than GA? Uh, um, I'll, I'll stick to both, man. I'll, I'll I think it's both. fine. Have done I think it's great. actually fine to have GA. I feel like both teams have had team fights that have not been favored. Like, there's not many good Kroko. items here. Like, I, th I think that... Um, Kroko like could maybe go a Sterax. If you look over and Nocturne could have maybe went a Cleaver instead. Apart, right? Pretty much it. into the back line. But normally a cleaver right is something that's like kind of a luxury item on Nocturne. You go up more when you're ahead. Guardian Angel for the set of AL, and we said he's trying to just nug a turbo one shot here. This is your one-way ticket composition. If you don't kill anyone, you're gonna end up dying. You don't have a way out of it. And with triple Guardian Angel, a lot of defensive stats onto the Ani. You've got Knights Val onto Rakan. You've got Mikels onto Rakan. It's just so difficult to pin anyone. Oh Harry, instead of AL and kill them. He has GA Harry. here. Two man play here on towards Harry. He's got a Guardian's Angel. It will be procked, but the TP from Shanks, maybe just procking the Guardian's Angel is enough. 369 now trying to escape. Croco? Got a Spider Man over to the chickens to. And they just procked the GA and left, I guess. And it's just a GA 369 did end up using his AL, ult so and ghost. Top e so it's not like they just use nothing for it. But I think it's actually a pretty decent play to look for. Kind of ruined AL's back row here. Three different lanes, getting Baron buffed right here. You still have the Renekton Akali threat on the side lane. Right now, Harry also lost his Garden Angel, which means that he could be very susceptible to getting 2v1 on a side lane. Oh, how broke does this Akali look, though? Could be looking right here, and I don't think 369 wants to walk out of that brush. 38 minutes, you have three and a half items only. It feels so bad. Also, Shanks' items are just terrible. What did he end up building, man? 
for top esports there weren't many plays that were he ended up going like, like, malignants which everyone goes easily. and then normally people are looking for like death cap void maybe somebody goes on another item maybe, maybe like some people are going zanyas because they have to like flash and engage maybe some people do some other things but who the fuck goes leandri's banshees rylai zanyas like what artillery if you will in your team and your front line is also set with like a bunch of garden angels so technically in a raw five versus five al should have definitely the upper hand they certainly should you'd hope that they would four thousand gold up but i don't expect there to be another 5v5 for at least a minute drake will be spawning onto the map and it could be soul for al if they're able to maintain control so uh, trouble talk to me here what is the game plan for AL? How do they guarantee this Drake and potentially the game? I mean, honestly, they can brute force themselves as a big bowl like they're doing right now and then walk into the jungle. All right, and try one to minute until some, Soul uh, for goal. AL. For top esports, is that they do not have anyone but 369 to I don't know if GA be, uh, being uh, down on Renekton actually does anything. Down. So, as you'll see, AL this guy has 414 CS, lane, bro. Towards that bolt side, put down a little bit of vision control, then back again, get a few more wards. Now. They do have a couple of control wards still in their inventories and they'll take complete control of the bot side of the map. And there is a very cheeky control ward where a Necton is right now if you look on your map, right above him in the tri-brush. Tri-brush, sorry. Um, Cream could potentially get a flank TP together with 369 and with the uses of paranoia that could catch potentially AL off guard. That is a very nice cheeky control ward placed down by 369 that could make all the difference for Top Esports in the next fight. Let's see if they could find the miracle play. Both TPs available for the solo laners. Cream catching the wave on the bottom side right now as AL get that mid prio, and we'll be able to push this wave towards top esports. Jackalup catches it. Drake spawning in ten seconds time. Vision denied in that mid lane. We've got to remember as well, Baron up in twenty five seconds. Pinging it. They're pinging it. They're pinging. They're pinging the ward. They're like, we have vision right there. I think Cream might just TP to it. Yeah, I think they just knocked her old TP and just send it. The enemy team is two available GAs though, still. TP coming out from Cream behind the lineup of AL. GA available for Hope. They're gonna try and get onto Maybe the they kill Renekton here? Like, I don't know, bro. Who do you kill? Oh, they're trying to kill Hope. Oh, kind of clean by Cream. Jackie Love is still alive. Hope is dead. Harry is just unkillable, bro. Oh my god, there's 50 fucking GAs in this fight. Nah, this is such a mentally ill fight, man. The win for AL. There was what? There was four GAs in this fight? Basically, top esports tried their best. We it was four GAs, right? Jackie Love had one and then he sold it right here. What the fuck did we just watch? Goes down from AL. You see the yeah, Renekton just killed everyone, bro. I thought maybe they were going to try to kill Renekton because he's one of the only ones that doesn't have GA. He does so much damage at this point. Like, the Renekton is a assassin almost. Look at the Renekton damage here. Me, when he actually gets in. He's just like I don't know, bro. His ult and like everything is just killing everyone. Been very, very, very disastrous from AL. If all those Garden Angels were not in play right there, you will see that as Jackie Love is going down, he'll take Shanks with him and only. Nico just died. One v one. Okay, nice. Enemy team gets Baron then. This is a disaster for Dude, big for AL, bro. If AL win this, what does it mean? What does it mean if AL win this? AL win this. They qualify for playoffs. Then it's between Weibo and WE, but Weibo has game score. WE plays against Ultra Prime, though. And Weibo plays against IG. Both should win. Holy fuck, bro. If AL wins the series, it's absolutely huge. If they lose the series, though, they're just out. They have Shanks as well. They can TP him into this one. There you go. TP straight onto that creep. And Top Esports have to make a last stand right here. Mid turret going down. 369 buffering a lot of the damage. Is this just dead or what? 369 might go down. Cream. Threatening onto five, but perfect execution out of the Yeah, play. Cream can't play, bro. That's so much used. Cream basically has no threat remaining. 
You know, heart steel is not a good item here for 369. He should just go anathemas. Go anathemas and just put it on anyone. <laughs> Such a fake play. <laughs> and then Nico just dies and gets one tapped as he's just going in. Okay, they're actually fighting. I like to see it, bro. Is a 26 to 13 scoreline as AL take down top esports. All right, we got a series. We got a series. And this is why we wake up for the LPL bangers, bro. This is why we wake up. Rely on that win. This is the first step out of two to them making yeah. it into the playoffs. They need this win 100%, no matter what. It's and they still have to rely on other results, right? But what a huge display taking down on hit tank Varus. it's been broken bro it's been broken it was slightly misplayed and also outplayed lpl no i mean this is a good this is a good game bro this is a good game i mean top esports definitely played worse than they normally do but even when top esports plays bad they're not that easy to beat I thought AL played much better than they've been playing. He's got to remember, dude, AL's on, like, the biggest slide of all time. Like, if you look at this, bro, look at this. Look at how AL started. 2-0 FPX, 0-2 WE, 0-2 BLG. Okay, that's fine. 2-1 LGD, 2-1 Ultra Prime, 2-1 OMG, 2-0 TT. Lose to, a to um, EDG. Then they beat Weibo and beat NIP. And everyone's, at this point, everyone's like, okay, they're 7-3. and three. They're just a good team. Into lose to RA, lose to IG, lose to RNG, bro. They lost these three, bro. They had a chance to be like at least 10 and 6, maybe 11 and 5. And they ended up losing these three in a row. Like maybe you could lose to IG or whatever and you just get to nine wins early on. You're like pretty much qualified to playoffs at the beginning of week seven. And then they lost to like LNG as well, who is looking better, but they're not like a great team by any stretch. So. This is this is an insane slide for AL. They went from literally seven and three to seven and eight. And most likely it looked like they were just gonna be seven and nine because they play against top esports, which is one of the strongest teams in LPL. So it'd be a huge win, bro. If AL actually win this and they qualify for playoffs, it'd be massive for them. Alright, beer back.
Oh shit, I was muted. Yeah, top esports will have a game score difference over JDG if they equal. Bro, I hate having allergies, bro. It's so annoying. I have to perma fucking mute. I'm muted literally like every fucking like I, I mute myself like 15 times a game. It's so fucking annoying. Can't wait to be back in the states, bro. Bro, what is this music? What is in my ears right now? You mean eating kebab every day? No, I mean, it's more just that like I'm perma allergic here because obviously I'm living in a place that used to have a cat. So it's GG for me. My favorite part about Europe so far. I don't know. I, mean, I haven't really done anything that's been like, I mean, I guess like the, 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 the schedule for me is the best part. Like operating in this time zone is like 50 times better. Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Munch joined by Trouble as we head towards our second game here after a surprise upset from AL. They are on a five series loss streak but that won't stop them showing up today when it matters the most playoffs on the line and they have come to play one zero up against top esports and honestly kind of insanely good game from al absolutely i love the quick thinking from them i feel like top esports and they're able to watch lp on 11 a.m instead of 3 a.m that's like 10 a.m start early game with a kalista lane towards the bot side of the map AL said, no not problem. bad, bro. We'll get the heck out of this lane. We'll escort our virus towards the top side of the map. Croco was always shadowing the correct lanes. When they did escort uh, Hope towards the top side to get the plates, Croco was there. When Shanks had to be on a side lane pushing out the wave, for part of Europe has only been to one. I mean, I've been to multiple countries, bro. Like, I've been to Europe multiple times. I mean, the only reason I'm in Berlin is because this is where, like, a bunch of people I know are. Right? If I were to travel to Europe, I mean, Berlin is... I'm not going to say it's my least favorite city, but it's definitely on the lower end of the cities I've visited. Um, like, even around Germany, like, I preferred being in Hanover. I preferred Munich to Berlin. I'm not as a huge fan of Berlin as a city. It's okay. I mean, it's not, like, bad. The only place that I, that I went to in Europe that I was like, damn, this is just a shit city is, like, Kiev. You have Ukraine. I was like, this is just, this is just a bad place to be. Listen, man, if it's not Shanks, if it's not Shanks, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like he played a fantastic game. He was everywhere. He facilitated for his jungle. He started fights. He ended fights. He stayed alive as long as possible. He's, he's zoning, he's positioning, he's back and forth. Like, absolutely. Yeah, Ukraine just sucks, bro. I don't know. It just sucks to be there. I don't It just. All right, time to find out. It's Croco. It was just horrible. <laughs> like going to Ukraine was like going like it felt like you were going like 50 years into the past. It was like it was crazy, bro. He had 69% kill participation, so that did it for me. He definitely deserved it. Uh, no, but Croco was fantastic. Yeah, it's 10 years ago. Maybe it's better now. Lanes, the way he was there in the team fights, the way he would zone off these virus. Like I feel like he played a huge part in not only not falling behind in this lane while he was spending so much time trying to escort his laners. To the correct paths, but I got a yeah, I really like uh, the Netherlands. 
we'll, we'll about, yeah, it's my time. it's my favorite country that yeah. I've been to. It's up one for Shakes, but to be fair, like later on into the game, it, was. it has a, like a, it's crazy because it's like so close to Germany, but it has a way different vibe. Absolutely. There's something like cold about Germany, bro. It's like there's a like kind of a very like harsh attitude with people. Like people just seem a lot ha happier in uh, Netherlands. Everyone always says it's because of the weed, but no, nah, I don't know. It's like more relaxed. They're just like hippie Germans. I've been, I haven't been to um, Italy now. I haven't been to, to Southern Europe pretty much at all. Been to a lot of uh, Northern European, Western European, yeah. Very, very strong pick for himself and him having such an incredible performance with the Anne in game one, resorting back onto one of his other favorite champions will also be it. Now, Renekton also pretty strong on Harry. It's typically a B1 that's very easily blindable for a lot of teams. Oh, hope all right. you, want a, you want a taste of that one again? Let's go. There is first pick. <laughs> so he's like, well, all course. right, buddy. If you if you really Round want two. another serving, uh, we'll see what they go for. Whether they do opt to go for the Callista in the bottom lane again, that would be. In Scandinavia, I've never been to like Sweden, but I've been to um, been to Denmark. To I honestly want them to do it, and I want them to have a composition that plays harder into the bottom. I like Denmark because that was a nice country. In the first game, did not give them enough priority for the Akali to roam around. Into Belgium, Switzerland, Denmark, um, Spain, gap even wider. So this Netherlands, Germany, four four now, this split. Ukraine. I might be forgetting somewhere, but yeah, where I've been. Okay, Varus, Renekton, Callista. They're running back to Callista. This time they take the Renekton though. Harry is. A Cassante main, like it's by far his best champion. I mean, if you look at Harry's games of legends, bro, Harry. Let's just look at Harry's games of legends. He's played 13 games, Cassante, 11 games, Udir. Definitely could be a takeaway from Mako as well. He was so dominant with that into game one. And his Cassante is 70% win rate. Look at his win rate on Cassante. Look at everything else. It's his most played, and he also has 70% win rate. 36 on Udir, 42 on Aatrox, 0% win rate on Rumble with four games. Uh, he's got some some games on NAR, two games on NAR. Like, look at that win rate on Cassante, bro. This guy wants to play Cassante every time. Even though Renekton is good at the Cassante, if I was top esports, I would just ban it. Because it, it still is just by far his best champion, so. However, you do still have the chance of pretty much flexing the Nico around. And if an Ari gets locked in right here, I'm pretty sure there's also going to be followed up by an Annie ban from the set of top esports. Cream, a damn good Ari to work with as well. This is a lot of power in all three lanes. I mean, you've got three exceptionally strong champions when it comes to the sort of early to mid game. This is a powerful composition so far for top esports. They just need their kind of support lineup, right? The support and the jungle lock-ins for them. Annie going to be banned away from Shanks to try and set up for a better matchup, assuming that uh, Kale is taking the Nico pot. This seems kind of similar to the previous draft, right? Where we saw okay. Nico. Any ban? Top esports is that flex. I mean, I guess it's a flex, but, flex, but it's not bro, like Kalista, but we really just gonna give Harry Cassante? I just don't like the idea of it. Yep, Tabby the goat. Tabby the goat. Banned from AL, but also the Viego. We've seen how potent. Uh, the double reset duo between Ari and Viego can be, especially in the early game. And they are Jesus. really, really, really strong, especially when they hit that level six and they can start skirmishing and dashing around. Ari super strong. You've got a super strong top lane. The lucky from Renekton as well. What the so fuck is that comment? All right. right here would pinch maybe TN a little bit. Could Rumble ban. I mean, they're just gonna invite the Cassante like late because 369 is like, I don't care if it's the best Cassante on earth. I'm playing a winning matchup. I'll just win it. So I wouldn't be surprised if I guess it's based. Right Nalus is out. Okay, what are, do they just take Renata here, bro? I think you just take the Renata. Yeah, I'm I'm down with just taking the Renata. Like it might not be ideal situation, but it's still Renata Callista. I would just take the Renata. And here, because it is Tian, he has a couple options. One would be Poppy. The other one would be Xin Zhao, and the last one is Viego. But I'd I'd be more willing to give him a like Poppy or Viego game based off what he's playing into. Now, throwing 
Poppy's over to the side of AL. I wouldn't be surprised. Poppy for AL. I mean, I think Poppy interconnected is just not a good lane. I think it's even worse than the Cassante lane. Like an Alistar over I think it's just really hard. With the virus, however, Poppy is going off. is still open, and this is something that he does really favor. Loves He's like, shut the fuck up and pick Rakan. I don't care if they have. It is still up and available as Renata. Okay, is it a uh, Nico support again? Ivern? I, I wouldn't really like Ivern. I think Ivern, um, uh, Ivern Ari is just pretty weak mid jungle. I think you want Poppy, Xin Zhao, or um, like Poppy is probably out now because they ended up going Karma. So you probably don't go Poppy, but I would like Xin Zhao or Viego with what you're playing into here. Would be a I don't really like Sedge for the same reason I don't like Ivern. I mean, Sedge is a little bit better than Ivern because it's a little bit more damage. But I just don't like the idea of picking like low damage. Um, champs with Ari. I think it just makes Ari a lot weaker when you're playing with a Sejuani or an Ivern compared to if you're playing with a Lee Sin, Viego, Xin Zhao. Uh, Rek'Sai, Vi, whatever. Something they can actually kill. I bring my whole setup to you. I mean, I didn't bring computer monitor, but yeah, I brought my, like, mouse, keyboard. My mic and everything, yeah. Potentially playing through 69 could very well be a very viable option. However... However, I raise you the Uno Reverse, which says this is an LPL Kalista Renata lane. We don't care what we're playing into. We're going to shove in the wave and we're going to try to tower dive you and fight you 1v1. Now, it's not going to be the easiest task into Varus and Nico that have a bunch of wave clear among them, but it's still pretty darn doable because this is Jackie Loves Kalista. It certainly is. We'll see how the 2v2 down in that bottom side goes. It's always fun to watch. When Jackie Love and Mako have an aggressive matchup, but Hope and Kale, plenty of presence in that bottom side themselves. A lot of wave clear available to them, so we'll see if they can gain control of that lane. I'm looking towards that top side though. Like you said, Renekton Sejuani, a lot of ability to play through 369 here for Top Esports. But also the Sejuani Ari, that pick combo, that combination of. How trash is NA? The three EU players you shit on their entire here. region, 3 0 their best team. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't think that like NA players are better than EU players in general. Like, I think that LCS and LEC are pretty close when it comes to like skill. Like, I, like, I'm not like viewing it as like, like, when I say that I think that like LCS is better than LEC right now, it's not like I think that Americans are superior to Europeans. It's more just like I think of the strength, the strength of the league is better. My bad, sorry guys. That's okay. That's okay. I think that there's just a lot of really terrible teams in LEC right now. You know about my hate of Sejuani plus Harry together. It's like G2, Fnatic are like, okay. And then like, yeah, I mean, even I think heretics are frauds. I think everything lower than that is just, they're just not good. I don't know. Oh, I love this for AL. I love this for AL splitting the map in half. They know what Jackie Love and Mako can do onto a pick like Renata Kalista. And people are viewing it as like a personal offense when people talk. You know what's so strange is like people are trying to also paint me out as being like NA biased when I was literally just flaming NA perma for like five years. This is probably the only time in like history that I thought that LCS was better than LEC. Like, I'm like the least NA biased American. When it comes to like league ever, besides it's like maybe LS is is up there as well. I have no problem shitting on NA or saying that LEC is better. I just don't see it right now. It's fine. At this level one, and now splitting the map to try to force some pressure. Shanks, good trade there. Who wins this map? I think Top Esports will win. I think this is a 369 Renekton masterclass. That's what I think. This was the mage that Green was still very happy and very comfortable playing. Is Jackie Love and Mako going to try and force Croco out of the jungle here? Gromp will reset and TN moves down. So no interest in this vertical jungling nonsense from the side of top esports. They want things to be a little bit more normal. TN moves in. Both junglers However, stood on a ward looking at each other menacingly. 
I feel like AL have the upper hand right Oh, you even said the G2 Fnatic should be the best in the West. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like that's that that was my take. My take is like I think that maybe the best European teams are better than the best NA teams right now, but I think on average the the LCS is stronger. I think the average level of teams is better. He's not even going to smite it. Able to get it. Which is okay. which is just weighted down by like the real like the really bad teams in EU are I think are just like horrible horrible teams. Like Rogue, Giant X, K Corp. Like K Corp is such a bad team, bro. Like they're just the best they're just the worst western team, right? Just the move advantage for top esports because the wave wasn't really crashable. Like SK, like their macro is some of the worst macro I've ever seen out of a, like a major region. He's still massively down in CS though. Look at the CS advantage for Hope so far. Tien moves in. Okay, Tien stole it, but is he dead? He looks kind of dead. What is he doing? Aftershock? Is, is he good? Krakow just has no Q. Because Tien stole the camps. I mean, I guess he lost his flash, but he gets the crab. Krakow is suffering. Tien gets out alive from this. He pushes in for a scuttle crab. He pushes into the river for Skullcrab. He has no bot lane prior. He knows Karma is in this brush. <laughs> Not only does he get in, but he gets out of it. That was some blabber level play right there. That was some blabber level love. Ooh, okay. Okay. Scuttle Mako crab. flash for flash with the Nico. Nice. Taking the flash away from Kyle as well. I mean, I he think that, yeah, that's probably advantage of Mako. Loving. That's probably advantage of Mako. I mean, at six, he has more safety because there's a Callista on his side. Nice stuff right there from Tia. Again, Nico without flash. It's much weaker champion, so I can see it. Tien also got top crab here, by the way. Tien is chilling right now. Big CS lead. However, he did work. Has put him 12 CS up. That's four camps. Yeah, and you can see the flash for flash and the base stop. Yeah, but I don't. But um, the Renata doesn't care about getting his base stopped. Literally just taking his fourth camp of the game. Two of them were on. Tien's side of the map. So Croco still has a lot to get through, but Tien's already finished clearing that. He could go for a reset and then get back out onto the map. Dom so saying Niski makes any team end better, end any end team he joins better, but it seems like SK refused and took him over and said, no, I mean, I actually think that SK would be even worse without Niski. I still think he's like the best player on that team, maybe second best after Irrelevant. But yeah, I mean, I think, I, I think that Niski is making the team better than they are. I think that team is fucking dog shit, bro. Like, that team is literally, like, a borderline winless team with, like, an average... Like, if you put Jackies on that team or some shit over Niski, they're not winning a game ever. If you put Socket on that team, holy fuck, you can never win. And then he'll have no hey, even humanoid would probably just give up at some point. He just wouldn't care. He's currently jobless on the map. You'll see Tien is actually sprinting that bot side of the map. Cream is hovering as well. The second the respect move under the tower comes from AL. Okay. Two six nine already got out the TP. Surprised that Harry didn't want to like potentially trade ults or something there. This is a little bit scary to do. Okay. Feels like AL want to contest for this one. Rend is available, so should be. Oh, they're going on to Hope. They're committing on to Hope and Kale because there's no flashes here. Mako is just dead though. Oh, this is not good from top esports. They're losing this hard. This turn just wasn't good. Damn, bro, they just got wiped here. I mean, it, it's weird. I feel like like Tien is like tilted or something. Like he's forcing his team into like very ridiculous situations. But here, I mean, I think the play is you turn. Like they tried to like turn onto um Kale. Oh my God! Wait, Tien just fucking whooped his ass. But um, it, it looked like. His team didn't want to fight, and if you're forcing here, you're not forcing on Hope. You're forcing on Kale because Kale's no flash. Hope has uh, flash and cleanse there. Top esports, major disrespect. They knew that Croco was gonna be on the top side of the map, potentially clearing. Yeah, the pig just murdered him, bro. Start the dragon, but then Karma walks down, and as you can see, Cream is level six, but his support is level four. Then he said he. I make a Mrs. Q as well. I mean, it's just like a very sus situation. On the top side of the map, kind of walk through the Karma. Then they don't end up going for hope, even though Cream engaged on him. Then Jackie Love over extends, trying to get a kill while Cream is out. I mean, the the thing that sucks here is that like the kills ended up going. The kills ended up just going to um. But nobody was on the same page. To the Lee Sin. Pressing their buttons on the same target. Like if if Karma got these kills, it'd be way better, bro. If Karma got these kills, 
If Varus got these kills, it's significantly better. Like, the kills actually just went to the most useless people on the team. Leeson got two, and Nico got one. Yeah. I feel like you could hear that giant poro, though. I don't know. Bit of a weird one. Still think 369 is going to be a monster this game. It looks like a really good Renekton game to me. I mean, I guess, like, Varus, Varus can be OP into you. It's not, like, the best Renekton game, to be honest, but I just think that Renekton is, like, OP right now. I think it's definitely a playable one. Honestly, the top esports, again, these early game plays feel really uncoordinated. It feels like they didn't actually realize AL were able to contest. Oh, Harry. Oh, no. The snipe? is in bad. Uh, Flash? Crop, or a uh, kick, I mean. Well. Cream, oh! To be a part Saved Z. Oh, Croco is. Oh my god, Tien. Where the fuck are we aiming that shit? Dude, oh my god, Tien. That was an insane whiff, bro. However, Dude, I swear Tien and Peanut are just the same guys to me, bro. They are literally just the same players. Caught Shanks on the reserve right there, roamed real quickly towards the top side of the map. They need to get something going on the map. I think they're using the tactic that AL used uh, in game number one. Oh, very nice. Uh, old right there from Jack Love to save his support. Yeah, they're using the tactic that AL used on them from game number one. They're like, okay, well, our bot lane's screwed. So let's play towards top lane, get Ari and Renekton ahead, and then we can start playing for these team fights. However, your Kalista is never going to reach the levels of scaling that non-hit Varus did in the previous game, so you're still going to have to somehow get Jackie Love in the God, but hey, we still have Cabo. Yeah, yeah. crazy, bro. Yeah, Bobo just not on a team. Try and deny that fact further, Tien. Dips out, tries to steal the wolf with the flail, but Croco will be able to take that one. And Tian is actually pretty fucking ahead. Um, it would have been such a big kill, bro. If uh, if Tian hits that ult and Cream gets that kill, they get the shutdown onto Lisa in. If Ari gets that, he's really accelerated. What are the eight teams you want to see at MSI? On will life Genji. We'll start there. Probably like BLG, JDG, uh, G2, so Fnatic, C9, Fly. Indian's jungle, and every single time you have so much priority through your bot side of the map. The Karma is perma pushing. Your virus plus get turn here. Shavin, and Tian once again has tried to find a way. He's six nine, bro. He's got full turret. So big for him. He's so fucking strong, actually. Five tower plates have gone into three six nines. We're next, and then yeah. if I've ever believed in any top laner. Carrying any team through, it would be probably one the shy and then two three six nine for sure alongside I mean, Bing. So. You think the reduction of from ten to eight teams <laughs> increased the level of LCS? I, had a, I, had I think the the fact that people that don't want to actually be competing aren't making enough money to keep on playing and not putting in effort was the best thing for LCS. The lack of money has unironically made the LCS better. And Shanks both got to be a little bit nervous. And also, the fact that I feel like people often forget Renekton is a shield breaker as well. So even Shanks, who can put a big shield on himself, Renekton W does just remove those shields. So it still has massive potential damage if he can get onto that back line. Huge thing that happened in the bottom as well. Hope throws his chain of corruption onto Jackie Love. I love the fact that he keeps throwing that R onto Jackie Love, trying to potentially bait. Early oh my god, Tien can, or uh, uh, Croco can be murdered here. Yeah, he's just done. Damn. All right, Cream really wanted that shutdown. He just flashed for it. He's in fuck it. Croco versus Croco, who wins? I think it's got to be Croco at this point. Croco versus Croco, true. Available, but Shanks should definitely be safe in that scenario based on the first ult we saw this game. As uh, we've had a couple of whiffs from both junglers, honestly, but I'd say Tien, aside from that Sijuani, oh, that's been looking pretty good so far. Grubs up once again, two picked up out of the first three for top esports, and with the tower destroyed already in the top lane, they can move in to try and get some more as well. Oh, however, look at the rotation. You've got Cream all the way back in base. Tien, not old saves him. Takeover is huge from Mako. It saves Tien Mako's a homie. All right, they got three grubs here. It's gonna be three, three v three, three for uh, three grubs versus three, three v three grubs, I guess. Absolutely, and honestly, for Tien right there, he's honestly lucky to get out. 
because if you look at the rotation, they put Harry all the way down in bot lane with TP available if the fight breaks out, and they bring Hope, who right now has the ghost. I think there's a Nate on that unprofessionalism in the LEC, for example, right LPL and LCK works. coaching and method of teaching and playing the game is much more akin to professional said, football and soccer player. I mean, there's definitely right less respect in Western so League of Legends for coaches TM, sneak, TM, compared to in the East. Steals one away, but also, out. like, Western coaches probably really deserve good. less respect uh, as well. Sneaky play right there by TN and overall the map when you when you see like a lot of the the coaches in um in Korea a lot of them are like former pro players that end up being like really good like if your coach is like fucking dandy or score or like what are these guys like you're gonna respect the guy a lot more whereas like you know we don't have like former great players as coaches right now for the jungle of top esports knights are available as well another chain of corruption instantly taking the class off of Jackal, but that's exactly what oh my god want. hope has been throwing this out every single time trying to bait jackalove's cleanse which means that jackalove walking into the next fight might be problematic for him <laughs> yeah tough for jackalove there a lot of pressure in the mid lane cream is malignance here and uh we'll be able to survive the potential all in but won't once we get that plant he's kind of scared Still not quite finished his first item. This Rock is going to try to kill him here. One shot him. Oh, that is that is sad. Shot, importantly, and now Cream can move further into the okay, Tien gets the flash with his ult. Man. 369 <laughs> wants blood, bro. Every single time. Every single time. Listen. End up TPing for it. You miss it's all gonna be TP disadvantage for top esports. Let's see how they solve this. Probably just send the Ari top. Pretty yeah. easy solve. <laughs> Oh, Jackalove has no cleanse. He might have to flash here. Probably has to just flash the, flash the mantra key right here. Good. Okay, he, he that's that's even better for him, bro. I feel like mantra Q was going to get Jackalove's flash anyway. So the fact that he's able to get away with this here. Oh, they're just going to try to take turret. They're just going to take turret in his face. And if he stays the dive. The fact that he got flash Nico ult is huge. Right Nico having no flash for this Drake fight makes him so much weaker. So right now, about CS up on the it's much better for the Kalista to have no flash in the Drake fight than for the Nico to have no flash. Kalista is not even like that important for top esports right now. Like the people that are going to carry the fight are Arya and Renekton. Those are the strong members. Like the level nine Kalista that doesn't even have Bork or like will have just one item is nowhere close to as strong as the one and a half item Renekton who's level eleven with ult. Or the Ari, who's level 11 malignance completed. Like, these guys are way, way stronger. Super, super close to his second item completion as well. And Cream is looking. He knows Shanks is around. No tower there, remember. So Shanks has to just completely back away. TN in the area. Mako and TN have been joined. At the Mako's no, dead as hell. No. Hey, just ran it down. Surely not. Ult comes in from Cream to try and follow up, but... Shouldn't matter too over. much. Cream should have his ult have back questions. up, I think. I have so many questions. Clearly, Mako walked up there because he wanted to set down some. I think he should have ult back up. Let's see the cooldown on it, bro. It's Malignant's oh, level 11 CDR boots. Finish Codex. Dragon spawning on the bot side Ari. Of the map. Your team already has two of them. How about you did stop side completely? You play for bot vision control since 369 is also on the bot side with you. And you don't face check a quadrant, but you have absolutely no idea who's hiding inside. Yeah, a bit of an awkward one, to say the very least, there from Mako. And uh, Herald going to be slammed in the mid lane as well. That will take a tier one. And not only that, it will take mid control just as Drake spawns as well. AL move into that bot river. TP from Cream. Yeah, it's Mako just up. Vision isn't completely lost from the side of Top Esports Cream. Actually, Blast Cone. I think Top Esports have massive advantage in this fight. Kind of I mean, maybe AL don't even fight Top it, to be honest. They like, they're missing flash on Lee Sin, no flash on Nico, no flash on Karma. Um, the, the people, like, we're not having no flash, doesn't really matter here. Yeah, it's so hard for them to fight. Going top instead. All right, soul point for Top Esports. AL were playing primarily I feel like players so cared more so about the grind back when Dom was in the league. Well, the thing was like, it was just different, right? And we're kind of going back to that now. Like, if you're not making an absurd amount of money playing the game, then your choice is not going to be based off like, what is the most like, what is the most, what is the best financial decision for me? Like, it's going to be based off like, what do I actually really want to do? And when I was a player, you're making like 45K a year, like 60K a year, something like that. 
So the players that did it were people that really wanted to be league pros. Whereas like when people started making like 500, 600K, a lot of the people that didn't even really have passion for it anymore and just stayed around. This is about as close as it could get. Top Esports having those Drakes as their advantage. Three groups and two towers apiece. Oh, 369. 369. Either could be in trouble or could be making a sick flank play. Hard to say. Did he get spotted there? I don't know if Kale saw him. No, no, no. Okay, 369 goes in. 1v3. This actually good? This here. looks sus as fuck, bro. Tanky, remember, he went eclipse first item. You he, he didn't see Kale was the thing here. He only saw two. I'm baffled, honestly, Munch. I'm baffled. He must we have thought there was only how... two there or something. Yeah, that was literally it. He just thought he just didn't see Nika. Keep talking about how clean Tess is, how they'll take the first tower. They did take the first tower. However, the coordination this series has been completely off. Three six nine right there did not get spotted walking out of the of the pixel brush. He was actually pretty concealed by fog of war. I'm pretty sure. Oh, oh, just about, just about, they did. Just about, they did see him. He walks in, so he tries to get on the Yeah, if Nico wasn't here, he could probably... He, like, he won't kill them 1v2, but he'll be able to start the fight and then Tien will show up. To Kroko, who has been actually quite starving this game. Tien has been ahead in this matchup the entire time. I mean, he also didn't go the... Um, he didn't go the build that Harry went. The more tanky build with Sterex. Ended up going Cleaver instead. No so he's better in side lane versus the Kasate, but he's not as strong not in team fights yet. So lead for AL. Only a thousand gold. They know what's going on, though. They know someone's in that brush. That's the nice thing about Nico, too. You've got those clones to face check brushes for you and help you get control in the jungle. But top esports. Oh, ultimately going to be used there. By hey, That's going out to Shanks. A to use. Shanks taking a huge chunk to Mango needs old here soon, I think. Down. The aftershock keeps him alive for a bit. And Croco forced flash. Oh, Tears is dead. The ignite finishes the job. Cream dashing away from the dead. Croco Cream's dead. Oh my the god. Wait, they actually just win the game or what? No bail. Renekton has TP. He's gonna have to TP. They, sh they should still fight it. Renekton should TP here. They're gonna start the Baron as well. Very low HP bars, but the East TP onto Shanks. 369 is coming in. Renekton is massive, and Shanks is not gonna get. Renekton has flash here, bro. I don't know. This is really sketchy for Mail. This feels tense. 369 has to carry this one. Jackie Love in the play as well, trying to get damage onto Harry, but he's just so tanky already. Chunk out from Shanks. 6K on the Baron here. Hope is in now, fucking massive trouble, by the way. Hope is just having to flash out i guess oh harry's dead nah bro that was really sketchy by them it was such a sketchy baron made no sense it's like they thought that it's like they thought that 369 didn't have tp yeah they just they just get baron here for free this is a two baron disasters hey bro tabby can't fix everything immediately bro he can't fix the decision making that like these uh micro decisions you see that Kel is the same thing, and Chain of Fraction goes in here, and I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what for, because Tien is super tanky. Tien will very crucially miss his R right here. And missing your R sucks here because wide. you have, uh, he has Aftershock, right? So, now he doesn't proc his Aftershock after that. Capitalize onto anything that you'll see a fantastic engage ult coming in from Kel to stop both of them dead in their tracks. Jekyllov will pull out his support, but that will be all she wrote, and... You'll see 369 is going to push the wave down bot lane and actually become a threat right here. Cal, on the right side of your screen, super low on HP. Shang, super low on HP. Croco has to tank the Baron, super low on HP. Hope has no mana. And he's also tanking the Baron, has to flash out of the back of the pit. And by oh. that time, Tien is back. It's a oh. kick, it's a kick. Hey. I think that's Jackie Love down. I'm not sure. Big Lee Sin play. Hey, Jackie Love well. had no flash, Damn just got... AL. Flash by Croco. What a moment. Croco with a great kick now. Looking for 369 as well. Bit of damage returned, but the honey fruit will set it up. And Soul denied. That's a huge. Yeah, Soul denied. I mean, bro, why, they should be just in lanes. Also, slowing down the Baron so crucially. Imagine if that was Baron plus Soul from the side of top esports. 
to be able to take over your entire map AL. I've been playing so aggressive this series, you know. There is a case of nameplates all nameplates off thing. You know, you're playing against triple world champions on the set of top esports. AL have played with no freaking fear the whole time. Luca Croco gets the Q onto Jackie Love, the W Please. into flat uh, into R on the back to throw Jackie Love into literally yeah. the mouth of the sharks and AL completely demolish Croco. top esports is bot lane. Croco looks good today, but not as good as 369. Jackie Love just isn't good on Callista. Takes a kill for himself. Look at the sustain. Oh, He's gonna get a oh my god. 369 almost won before. Feels like they're not playing together at all, though, top esports. Feels like they're all just trying to, like, overpower. They're just, like, not taking them seriously. What's this for, though? What's this for? We see all of these skirmishes going down. The Ten of Corruption gonna go down again. They're looking for Mako. Callista still has his, her ult. But again, there's just so many skirts. You think it's the GOAT down, 80 so carry from LCS overall? How Not currently. I mean, probably he's double lift. Strong. But he keeps end up going down in scenarios where he's one versus X without a singular teammate on side. However, with a little bit of Baron that they have on the set of top issues, they're trying. Eh. Not quite there. From yeah, no there. flash That's on Kale yet. Trying. Him and Croco both trying to brute force and engage. It won't work out for them. Baron only got 15 seconds on it, and top esports not even able <coughs> to finish this mid lane tower. I don't know, with 10 seconds, maybe this wave will get in in time. I don't think it'll matter. I think they can pretty much just take this tower regardless of the Baron buff, but you want it for the Baron power play, guys. There we go. There you go. Just there nudges is. it higher as the, uh, as the Baron types out. So, the I mean, yeah, game is still pretty fucking the even. Most impactful Baron we've ever seen from top esports is. Uh, I mean, Shanks just gets 100 to zeroed. Yeah, it's kind of huge I mean, right there. 369 that he does find Good mechanics Kara, there. But then he gets kicked way too far back into the jungle. He actually cancelled one auto, like, though. You know what, he had, you if he got one more auto off on the Nico before he did his Nobody's E2, he, he actually kills in. there. Ari's all the way down the bot side of the map. No one is TPing into your favor, so... Oh, he's going Shoujin here. Okay, he's, he's going no Sterex, bro. Overall. That's kind of crazy, bro. No Sterex on Renekton? I feel like Re Renekton is so nice to have a Sterex on. Especially in a game like this because it gives you tenacity. I guess he already has some, though. You really want to be seen from top esports right here, especially since they have that trio of death, the Ari, the Situani, the, the Renekton. I don't quite feel that the Renekton has gotten fed enough or ahead enough in this particular game to be such a huge, huge, huge threat. I, I, All right, a I lot of shields coming in from Karma, you know, and, and kicks from Lee Sin. It's going to be so difficult to get onto Hope. I think that's part of the problem as well, is that 369 feels like he has to carry in this mid game because you've got this Callista composition again that didn't work out in the late game for them last time around. Bit of damage. Kian, what are we doing, bro? We just lost our flash for free. As the siege begins. But yeah, compositionally, you like what AL are bringing later on into the game. I said Prima still do a lot of damage. Mako. I am so confused. Oh, hang on. Mako's in trouble here. He stepped too far forwards. There's a flank from the top side. I think they're going to get away. Croco's oh, looking for it. Now on the Scryer's Bloom. Top esports walk away with their lives. Look at your Wait, it's EDG versus JDG in Look Beijing. Is that already on? Assignment. Back to school. Back to school. Lane assignment. Push in that mid lane wave. They're piling up as five on the bolt side of the map. There is nothing on the bot side of the map but a tower, and you're not necessarily gonna be diving in the arena. soon with your composition into a virus karma scene. It's not gonna be happening. That wave that was pushed in early by Crocodile, there was five man bot. Oh, maybe it is same arena. Okay. Resulted in the tier two mid lane tower. Again, yeah. we keep hitting on the same thing, but the coordination from top esports, the macro on the map has completely been torn apart by AL's movement. Yeah. They're faster, they're smarter. They're actually outplaying top esports on the map right now. And next dragon is coming up. Top esports wish they had some control over that area, but they don't. However, they do have a bunch of wards yeah. that they can TP the Renekton I mean, or Ari onto to try and get a flank. Imagine if they hadn't just super overcommitted on the bottom lane. Maybe they'd have. Rex Side Jungle is OP and Solky. I've been playing it. I think it's really OP. Those deep wards maybe make it worth it with TPs available for Cream and 369. No universe. Top esports can fight for mid prio here. Cream just desperately trying to clear the way from a distance. Croco. Oh, Kale got onto Jackie Love. Jackie Love ults them out, though. Leeson is dead. Oh, it looks really good for top esports. Hope is just getting fucked by 369. 
And Cream is gonna just dive him as well. Okay, it's GG. Alright. 369 whipped out his croc and put it inside Hope. They overcommit onto Renekton and Renekton bites them back. There's two crocodiles on the rift right now and 369. 369 I mean, they engage the onto top esports bot lane. Like, that would be good in a lot of situations. But here, Jackie Love just cleanses flashes out and then pulls Mako out. Most importantly, here as well. So now we can actually see how they can put to use. I really just haven't. Yeah, I mean, I see the angle. Like, like most of the time, this would work, but it's just Callista, Callista Renata, bro. With the Ari charm, they instantly destroy Croco, and then the overcommitment from AL onto Mako. Jackalove just pulls him out, throws him back out, and four versus five. Top esports just run you over. I got so excited when I saw Kale's ult, but I was so wrong to do so because my lord, that was one-sided for top esports. He looked like he did nothing other than ult. We I mean, he didn't get to do much there. Games, it feels like Tez are back on the scoreboard. Three Crazy seven, that the macro in my high elo games, Plat 3, is better than LPL. For... I don't think the macro has been like that bad. Where do we go from here? Cream is big damage. And also, I think, like, what people don't understand is that you have decisions in macro. And in LPL, they generally take, like, they take fights that are possible to win over, like, mega safe macro decisions generally in this particular one now, of course you've got double lanes pushing right here for the side of top esports you've got renekton pushing mid you've got the rest four man so like for example like when lpl teams get barren they do a lot of like five man dives in lanes where like obviously they know like times where they should just like 4-1 and they can maybe get more like maybe 4-1 is like low risk low reward but if they feel like they're strong enough they'll just like five mana lane with baron and just dive you and try to end the game they're much better at forcing fights on you and capitalizing on numbers advantage rather than uh, seizing right here. You see how difficult it is. That's the second wave that's pushing and they've been able to take about half that yeah. tower down. And most of that damage, I'm not going to lie to you, has been done by this meme. He's being sarcastic. I mean, I know, I know he's being sarcastic about the comment, but like generally like what people say is that LPL macro is bad. That is the general consensus that LPL is like a really bad region in macro wise. They are slowly but surely breaking through these inhip towers. Yeah, like AL, if they can't clear this wave, they are going to lose this bot in Hip Tower. Tien tanking on the front. Like oh my god, this guy's just getting one shot. Away, Croco, trying to 1v1, 3, 6, Bro, sure that's a 1v1, relax, Croco. You can't beat that guy. They get two in Hips here. Yeah, absolutely incredible from top of esports. The engage. Just to create enough space to do damage to that tower to take it down, and of course, Croco. We're taking the beginning of the, the season it was, but this region wo woke up. No, I, I don't. I don't think that. that I think the beginning of the season was also being like people were overreacting to it. Like no region was looking good at the beginning of the season. That's just how it is. Yeah, they don't really have necessarily anything going on for them. The karma is sort of there to wave clear, facilitate for the leasing. Hope right now is not on an on hit champion. He's playing more of the lethality vowers, which relies a lot on the on the poke. But if you stand still to try and poke them, the Renekton is jumping you, and then you've got Ari jumping on you, and Satsuani jumping on you. It becomes a little bit more difficult for Hope to play this particular game. And of course, the Cassante has fallen an entire item behind to the Renekton level 17 for 369 on the map right now. And even though he had a few overforced. Skirmish is on the map currently three, two, and four. Four items in level 17. Yeah. He's absolutely ruling the map. Every single Q Croco takes onto him. 369 just trades his entire HP bar. Yeah, 369 is an absolute monster right now. Same for Cream as well, level 17. Hey, JDG versus uh, JDG is starting right now. Gold from that Baron is 6k gold lead. Now we go into the ult lands from TN. Big Man, if Mega had ult here, this game would literally end. Croco, you are actually ill for this. Reset for uh for cream here. Gets another one. Bro, how broken is Ari, man? That's so crazy that his ult was still up. Like he's still getting ult resets. GG.
kind of a kind of a disgusting game, game from Top Esports, really but it's fine. Much. I'm not gonna lie to you. Three, six, nine, was it's fine, there, bro. But he manages to enter the fight, and they turn it around, equalizing the score versus AL. They win. Nothing but clean. Nothing but clean. There, there have been so many sighs. There have been so many question marks this series. All right. Yeah. And they also definitely be proud of themselves. Please restroom. They Play the ads, the and I'll be back. Bringing the fight towards top esports, and you can't say this about a lot of things. They're playing with no fear. Name yeah. plates are completely off from the side of AL, and I'm loving this because they're putting top esports on the spot. Top esports have to find the answers to come back into the game. They didn't in game one. They figured it out in game two. Fantastic stuff from Top Esports, but like you say, AL, they are showing up today and they are pushing Top Esports to the brink. We'll see how this saga ends after this break. Are Ale good or is TES just dog shit? Top Esports is just dog shit. The third best team in LPL or second best team in LPL, but they're just actually terrible. This guy watched LEC yesterday. He's like, is Rogue good or is G2 just dog shit? You've got two options. Which one, bro? Tell me, bro, which one? too is dog shit i'm a fanatic fan damn how shit is fanatic then you've been getting your asses clapped by g2 for like five years straight
JDG's draft is about to start, yep. Is it over for perks? Probably. I mean, he could still probably play if he wanted to, like, it would probably would get another opportunity if he wanted to, like, grind back for it. But I think for him, like, he's already accomplished enough. Holy shit, bro. Daddy Riss, LOL. Dude, Daddy Riss, Twitter is pretty unchained. drive problem or a mechanic problem for Kurt, for perks but I mean, it seems like it's a mechanics problem but like i don't know it's weird right because i mean most people thought that perks was gonna like come back and smurf this this split like within the scene most people had a lot of confidence in him because people thought that it was a mechanics problem right so he like put in like no one's ever really questioned his clutch ability or his ability to perform on stage he's never been like somebody who's known for stage nerves if anything it's been like the opposite that he was just one of the best stage players in like European history that he was always better on stage than he was like in solo queue and he was always somebody who um or not always somebody but in recent years perks was like not super high rated in solo queue most of the time like he would like be low challenger sometimes sometimes he'd be in GM for like the majority of the split he was just not like somebody who's super super high rated in solo queue so when he went to Korea like grinded the game three weeks he was like I think like 1100 LP or like 1200 LP uh, Korean challenger playing like all these different champions like people were like okay his mechanics are back he's like grinding his ass off he's gonna be good again which is why people like seal was like quote me on this he's gonna be a top three mid by the end of the year like everyone just thought he was gonna be good and then I don't know he just kind of ran it down the mechanics he missed positions too often I mean that's mechanics Knowing where to position is like part of your mechanical ability. Like when people refer to mechanics, it's like, how do you individually play the game? Most people act like perks every game this year was horrible before week three he has been one of the best men yeah i mean he he just started running it down super hard and then he just ran it down hard for like three weeks in a row i guess the thing was just like his the way that he was dying was so egregious like some of the games he was playing were just such bad games he was making very obvious mistakes and that just kind of like made it but i like the other thing is everyone wants him to be bad too like, I feel it within the, the community, you know? Like, if you just get the pulse of the community, people really, really, really want perks to be bad. They love seeing, like, I mean, in the community in general, people love seeing, like, a great player fall, and then also, like, his his ego, like, the fact that, like, he thinks he's good, it makes a lot, like, a lot of people in the league community are just, like, people that are unaccomplished, just by all definitions, just losers in life. Like so many people that type on Reddit are just such clear losers in life, just based on how the conversation goes. Like they just, they just prey on everyone's downfall and they talk with such, um, with like such a level of like, they, they condescend so hard to everyone about things that they are actually worse at than those people. 
like it, it's like by a large margin it's not like it's not like a co-streamer it's not like when Cadrill or me like calls a player bad and it's like we were pro players and we're, it's like they're literally like plat players that have no idea what the fuck they're looking at would run it the fuck down if they even got close to this level of game like not no, like no processing ability anything and they're just like talking like they're like yeah i'm like so much better than this fuck oh this guy is so fucking shit like it's it's crazy right so somebody who has like a lot of self-confidence that's accomplished a lot like perks is like the biggest trigger for redditors it's it's the biggest fucking trigger so just in general it's like it's like damn bro seeing somebody succeed it's like that's it, perks is literally like everything that redditors are not After so after LPL my solo yeah I'm gonna solo queue a bit today. We gotta play, bro. We gotta play. We're gonna try to hit Matt. Uh, we probably won't play enough games to hit Master today, but we're getting close to Master. Play 38 games so far. Probably play some Rexi on stream today. I need. I win 27 a game, so I probably need like seven, eight games for Master, and that's assuming I win them all. I'll probably lose like one or two for I Master as well. Well, Rogue Warriors are no longer in the LPL. They were Guess replaced what? by anyone's legend. And now we're going to three, game three. Uh, it's possible that the tradition continues here, Georgia. Absolutely. And I feel like there's a few uh, there's a few subjects there that played a big part of both of these wins that we just watched. Uh, one being the Croco, not the one that's playing for anyone's legend the other one in the top lane the crocodile i feel like it's played such a pivotal importance for both of these teams in terms of their wins over snowball but croco yeah. actually did 10 more damage than 369 did that game Ooh. so which croco is really more valuable so with, <laughs> you know what i'll give you that one because i didn't notice that <laughs> yeah i didn't mean to derail you there but i did like 10 damage no, that, was, often that, that was perfect you know what no no you you shot me up you're like you're saying one is better but i'm seeing the other one with more damage so Statistically, you know, yeah. stats based analysis, one croco is better than the other. Yeah. But yeah, all jokes aside, I feel like I think 369 is better than like Zeus and Bin. I think it just depends on meta. Right now, like, it's like really a meta dependent thing. And, uh, I think 369 is the best weak side top laner in the world. Like, there's this isn't even like 369 meta, bro. Like, 369 meta is like Gragas fucking Orin, like this type of shit. I think in a meta where you just weak side and ignore your top, then 369, you don't want anyone on your team over 369. However, I want to point my finger at top esports and say this is not. I think right now, like Zeus is like it's a weird question because Zeus and Bin like like Zeus is going through kind of a slump right now. I would say like he's dying way more than he was before. Um, and then Bin is also just like trying to be three six nine, <laughs> like. Zeus is just playing a bunch of weak side top laners as well. So it's like none of those guys are playing at their peak right now. They're being pushed by a team. That's sitting outside of playoffs contestion. They're literally fighting for their lives to make step one to possibly make playoffs for AL. So top yeah. esports need to step up and clean this out. See if they can. We'll see if they can finish things off for top esports this time. Banning the Callista, banning banned. the Renekton, but also banning <laughs> Shanks' Annie from game number one. Senna taken off the board. What direction are top esports going to go this time? That Nautilus that's okay. so often the one as well. Really important game, bro. If AL wins, they make playoffs. If they lose, they're out of playoffs. Literally, BO1 to decide their fate. Listen, we are top esports. We only first pick Kalista or Lucian. This is it. This is all there is. However, I would love to see a Maokai Tristana angle coming in for Shanks and Croco. This is literally their bread and butter. Shanks is a fantastic Tristana. Please do not pick something else. Not that you're hovering or I'm going to sound like an idiot. Oh, my God. Well, <laughs> all right, hope. Is it just going to be Lulu Zeri versus Nami Lucian? Perfect, bro. We haven't been watching this for fucking years. Linked into a lot of dive compositions, especially versus Smolder earlier on in the split. Although Smolder seems to have fallen off of a cliff, and I don't think many people are too upset about it. All of our teams today completely ignoring the little dragon. When in impact go to LPL or LCK again. I swear this guy could have won worlds or come close. He's still so good. I mean, he already won worlds, right? So I was thinking there might be a takeaway right there because 
Vi is extremely viable when you're looking at Lucian, when you're looking at Zeri. The one playing more if the meta is to leave top alone, wouldn't you want a player like Vi and Nautilus who have better mechanics like Binner Zeus that can create advantage on his own? But that's like not actually, but like that's not actually what happens when you leave people alone with 369. Like if you're not playing things like things that have carry potential and you're playing and these weak side top laners like 369 will just be even or slightly ahead based on what the conditions of his lane should be on his tanks and then he's going to come to team fights and be way more useful it looked like it could keep toe-to-toe -to -toe versus the Lucian Nami aggressive lane in the early game. So if it can go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Cream goes with Karma in the mid lane. On the Lulu. And Karma Lulu. Locked in there with the Zeri. So now we could go towards our ban. Zin Zhao could be a solid ban with Cream taking the Karma. In so it's the definitely going to be Zin ban for top esports, top esports here. Top Esports better ban Zin. Zin Zhao. Zen is so turbo OP for Krako. He's playing with a Lulu. He's playing into Karma Lucian. Vi Zen, bro. Ban both. Don't ego it. Absolutely. And I think over here, AL, I'm not going to worry too much about things like Lee Sin as well, because Talia plus Lulu make it so difficult for Lee Sin to get into the backline and get these kicks. You can interrupt him midway with both of these picks right here. So I don't think they're going to be worried too much about Tian's Lee Sin. They're going to mainly focus on pinning down that more aggressive jumper pool that you mentioned you like from 369 as well. So I'm like, screw it, Orn. It's time. Bring it out. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, man, I've never seen a more aggressive Orn in my entire life. This guy is like otherworldly on the champ. I might be a little biased because I also like Orn. So it might be like an Udyr Cassante Fiesta, but hey, I'll just drop it out there. Yeah, we'll see what he ends up going for. One thing I will say, big range advantage right now for top esports. I think that Udyr as well. Uh, the uh, Aatrox, it's 369's most played top laner of the split with 10 games on it. I can't believe Zinn was not banned. I think it's so turbo for Krako to play here. Keep AL at arm's length. The problem is you're blind picking. Wow. Why would you not grow Zin here, bro? Why would you not go Zin? They really want the Cassante because all the other top laners are banned. And they think carries a, a liability on Aatrox. I don't know, bro. Now top esports get the get the Zin. Because Kroko was winning the previous game, then he gets solo killed by a level up Setsuani. So giving counter pick right here to Just Aatrox Zin? Their jungler wouldn't be a very bad thing, especially since they had in mind just to play a tank on the tops of the map anyway. Now, I do like the Aatrox here. I'm not mad at it. However, I do like it more when there's a Milio uh, in the team, but it works pretty well with the Nami as well. The speed ups, the heals really help that Aatrox alongside the Nami, of course. Sorry, the Karma get him into this fight. I'll be surprised to see the Zinzao locked in here. Zinzao, Karma, super prior early game. Zinzao well. lock in. I mean, they go Volibear here, but yeah. Zin would just be so like nice for them because Zin is like the an Omega tank in this type of game. Zodiac. Like the meta has moved on a little bit. Like pretty much if you go Zin on exactly four here, you're probably oh, no. getting Cassante on five anyway. Zin pairs really well with Lulu, so it becomes like obviously inflated tank stats because you're with a Lulu. But when you're playing versus range champions like Lucian and Karma, and there's no way for them to like really engage on you or like get within your ult, you just end up being so fucking broken OP. You see jumping, you run a jumping, you go in. Uh, it's a very similar concept. And you just take no damage ever. Likes to play the game, and also since you have uh, the stun as well from your Q, it's very easy for Talia to follow up. Now I love that there is some aggression and some. Isn't Poppy good here? Nah, I wouldn't really want to go Poppy. Much else going on. Like I think Poppy is just too. Um, I I don't like Poppy Talia most of the time. I don't like playing things that are low damage with Talia mid. I think you want something that has like high damage and is strong on its own. I think that when you're playing like Talia plus um, plus Poppy and then you also have uh, Zeri Lulu, it's like you're so fucking weak early you can just get ran over. So you want something that has that power, which is why you go like Zin or Volibear. And also like Poppy with a Lulu doesn't really work that well. Who has better draft? I mean, I think that anyone's legend has better draft. But I think Top Esports will win. 
most important players on AL today. It's him versus TN has very much been the matchup to watch out for. We I think that anyone's Legends into draft into is is pretty series. fucking good here, to be honest. I mean, I think, but I, it's like also just depends on like your opinion on champions, right? Like I'm somebody who thinks that um, that Talia is super OP. Upset over top esports and potentially knock them like out I, I think Talia is just broken, just giga broken. Get themselves into playoffs, everything on the line here for anyone's legend. I mean, I guess the angle that that top esports has is they have like really good poke, and Ale has no real answer to the poke, so in that term, they have better draft. But in terms of like the like lanes in the early game, I'd probably rather play Ale's draft. It's always like a game of chicken, happen. honestly, where sometimes you just don't get them and it's like, how long? How long are we waiting? How long do we commit yeah, to do, try to see if the Gyos come on through? But once you get to like 45 seconds on the clock, I... I no, first of all, I mean, the thing is like, I think top esports will probably point. just... I feel like top esports will generally roll them, but the could be wrong, you know? The have that feeling first so i wouldn't go al first to five top esports and it's not surprising uh i'm gonna hold the thought though on the draft is croco gonna go for an invade cream spots it out takes a few rocks for his trouble tian forced away ward on both sides oh tian wants to fight it i don't know if they can fight it Mantra Q, okay. Shanks is in really big trouble. Shanks is really fucked. Croco hit level 2, though. Go on to Cream. Oh my god, they all flash at him. Yeah, I don't know. Top Esports, like, I don't know why they fought that. I mean, they tried to do the, um, yeah, they tried to fight it because they had, uh, they had Karma hitting, like, a mantra Q on a, ch on a clump. I don't know. So, it ends up being four summoners used from, from top esports. There was, like, all summoners used from AL, though. So, that's pretty big. What a fantastic could just get like level two on Zen and then send it in a lane. Well, actually, no, you can't because he actually started W, didn't he? He started W to try to outsmite here and he just didn't get it. And honestly, I'm like, I cannot believe my eyes. Like, Volibear and Lulu and Zeri invading a Zinzao Karma. Like, your RQ hurts a lot um, early on for Cream. And I feel like they just caught them off guard. Nami Lucian were already down the bot lane. They were too late to the bet. Yep. moment. And Again, AL. I do bet. Fantastic start. Unfortunately for them, the Lulu ends up cashing in the yeah. kill. But hey, a kill is a kill, and we take those because there's a bunch of summoners that are also missing from the set of tests. Fantastic start. From I'm pretty AL. good at um, yeah, success. Like, like uh, the, uh, I guess it would be the equivalent of like this up 50 the units. Nice to have I don't bet super high amounts though. Powerful trades here for coming out from Cream, but Shanks. Doing a good job I don't like how betting uh, high amounts makes me feel, to be honest. Like, even if, even if I have like the money for it, I just I, I don't know. I'd rather just bet like what to me would not be significant amounts. So essentially, my whole bankroll that I've had on Thunder Pick is like 6k, and then I've taken out money. Like once I made 6k, I took it out, and now I'm just playing with the winnings. And you fail, you fall so massively behind in terms of clearing your jungle, as you'll see right here, Tian. It's gonna be invading towards the top side of the map. There is priority through 369 in the top lane has been bullying out Harry onto this Cassante. And 369. In a wave the tower. He's got so pressure top. Does Tien go for red or does he not? I mean, he has no flash. It's pretty scary to do this. I guess he knows. He's actually gonna get a, a CS lead somehow. I mean, the thing is, Croco, he won his two worst farming abilities, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Or not two worst farming abilities. He just went Q instead of W at two, which is what you normally do if you're full clearing, so. Yeah, there was that. 1v1 would be hard losing for Tien right now. The bubble for Mako. Can't fight, though. And Kayla just destroying this 2v2. Yeah, absolutely. In top esports, they need to just sustain. They don't actually win all in. Unless they hit like a godlike bubble, you know. see a lot of roaming early on. The Zeri stays alone in lane. Then four gets punished by the Lucian Nami. But right here, the walking bot. Still no flashes bot. I mean, he could look for an angle here. They actually don't have wards either. Quite remember the team Get the full crash the wave. It's doing relatively Oh, no flash. Oh, no flash here. Check into a Zinzao. Mm. Hope dashes away from the W. Bit of damage out from Tien. I was worried there, but 
the ward keeps him safe. Oh, Harry actually denies a recall for 369. Okay. Harry stops the recall. He already TP'd. Recall should come on this is nine can just base TP. He's fine. Recall, he, he doesn't even lose anything. I don't even think he loses a minion. Maybe he loses one. Level four for Tien. He can still look bottom. I mean, they still have no flashes. 2v2 right now. Would. Oh. Got a scrap. Oh, he actually knocks him up. Okay. That was not it. Okay. Mako was not expecting that. Cream is just fighting Shanks. Okay. <laughs> They're just. They're scrapping, bro. Can they do anything with this? Oh. Tien is really scared to walk in. Okay. I'm loving this so much. Bro. Jesus. They're scrapping it. They both have kind of the fact that Jackie Love has no cleanse is kind of sad for him in a lot of these trades. Happening the early game to try and shut down the Lucian Nami off the gecko and get hope onto the late game carry that he wants to be further on in the team fights. However, top esports are playing very cautiously this time around. Apart from that first blood, they've played very well into Shadow in bot lane. There was a very unfortunate read from Croco into Tian's jungle that actually slowed down a little bit his rotation onto the map. And as you can see, even Cream, level five, tries to follow up onto Shanks, dipping into Fog of War towards the bot side of the map. So we said that we wanted to see a lot of- I feel like Tian holds Q3. Yeah, I, th I thought Tian was, was gonna hold Q3 far. as well. I, have done very, very well I think holding Q3 is pretty good, but I guess he just didn't, like if he doesn't Q3 there, yeah, so far, so good. and he's not he's able, and it, the ball lane doesn't give him the dash, then Croco is just gonna beat his ass. They kind of has to like Q3 him if they're not willing to like full full commit. It's been an entertaining game so far. Even though there's only one kill on the scoreboard, there's been a lot of action. There's been a lot of scrapping. Tien though, off the back of the presence top lane from 369, we'll be able to get these first three grubs for himself. So I guess the first time this series we're seeing one team get the first three grubs. I feel like it's been two for one trades each time uh, so far this series. But again, AL. I feel like right here. Sorry, go on. Go on. No, no, right here. I feel like Tian had the time, right? Because she knows that he has set the volleyball way. All his camps are up top. I mean, Tian's mega efficient right now. Void grabs, you're most likely going to lose or fall behind one or two camps. But just because Tian knows the difference already in terms of camps and how far ahead he is compared to Croco, it allows him and it gives him time to play for those tarot platings. Also, it works really well when you have Lucian. You know, if Lucian gets ahead from your bot lane, even or even ahead, he can be a huge. Croco's not even level uh, six yet. Tian's level six. Extra buff from the void grab. You've got Aatrox later on as well. Who's gonna be How close is Croco to six actually? It's a great investment, especially since he knows he has created this sort of. Uh, Doesn't it six off that? Mm. I mean, a three v three should favor top esports right now. The yeah, level advantage will be huge here. This is one of the things that you realistically want on a Zin Zhao is to have this early pressure, to have presence on the map. Same can be said for Volibear though. And Croco struggling to. I actually don't even view Zin as an early game jungler, by the way. Like, I know a lot of people say that about Zin. They're like, oh, he's so good early game. But I actually think that Zinn is like a scaling juggler. It's just like a team fighting, like get two items and just be unkillable type juggler. I don't think they need a ward right now to spot where Croco is on the map. I think if you wonder where the volleyball is, he's most likely going to be bot lane. There's no way you're going to be playing around uh, Cassante. You can He's essentially just a tank, bro. Like, Zinn is just an ult bot, which is something that I don't really like about the champion. I, I liked it more when it, when it was more of a, like, early game dueling champion. Like, you can still duel early game. Like, you, you have the ability to do it, but the most OP part of Zinn is definitely the, um, over in the, bolt the ult is being able to like perma tank in fights just right way tankier than being, other but, junglers again I'm, I'm loving the approach right here from top esports they're playing very reserved in this early game a lot of the skirmishes a lot of their fights in the early game were a little bit scrappy and right here they're just taking a little slow Hope potentially caught here dashes over the walls keep trying to chunk him so they can start drake it's probably a good enough chunk to be honest yeah, and just return to the bottom lane again but tian can start this drake up it's got a crab in favor of AL, so full vision of this for Croco. I mean, there's no way that uh, AL can contest. They're not going to contest. Maybe Croco just goes for a steal. It's risky, though. He could lose his life for it easily. Mako would just be blocked for him. Okay. Uh, Tien, just take the Drake, please. 
Thank you. Trying to go on Mako because Mako's no flash. Hey, they flash onto Jackie Love. Looks really good. Looks really good. Nice, bro. Good flash onto Jackie Love. Jackie Love went too far forward. I didn't like Tien like the initial turn though. I thought it was really weird. And like also this isn't a point where like cream is able to connect and be op like they should have just got the dragon and got out to run past everything and just engage in a very straight line again we talk about how linear as a champion volibear is he sees champion he runs and champion he kills champion like their whole idea here should be that like they have tempo however so just get the drake and get out because zeri can't be there that should be the idea he marks him then he is back in he takes a huge chunk of his HP. He doesn't have his ultimate. He's leaving to Last cone diff. Side, which means fight is done. Fight is over. Now here, Kree yeah, I mean, Jackie Love just walked forward and killed himself. Gives it is what it is. sense of security for Jackie Love and Mako to go back in. They did not have their team with them. Tien just wanted to zone them out. He took the dragon. He got out. However, again, Jackie Love and Mako Lulu enemy can play. with the over-aggressive play get absolutely punished then Two and zero on yep. hope. Two and zero on the Zeri. Oh, I think they're getting they're, they're free hitting bot though. Like yeah, I don't really this like these types of trades, trades, man. I really don't like these types of uh, map splits when you're playing against grubs. Like they're doing it so they can get the grubs themselves, but like they're not even like they're they're so far behind on tempo here. So this will be at minimum a couple of plates taken down for them. So a trade between sides of the map is 369 just tries to clear these minions out we'll be able to do so hope not able to get that second plate jackal and mako really under absolutely no threat from a Cassante, so they can just keep this going down in the bottom lane keep on pushing and this is the stag shiv on the lucian as well so the push power even stronger than you'd usually expect right, 369 just trying to keep them off the turret I wasn't sure if 369 was gonna look for some kind of angle is an award Tian is on a ward. I want to see bot turn HP. Because now it's three grubs versus three grubs, but Puppy Sports has had so much tempo here. They didn't expect Tian to be towards the top side, but. Aries like trying to stack his Q off Gromp. The blue buff is going to get confiscated away by Policeman Volley Bear right there. No longer yours unless Tian can somehow steal it away. Harry's getting bullied underneath his tower. This is going to be a full tower going down with our platings yeah. i mean minutes i don't know bro i'm not a fan of this play like you're not gonna even be able to answer to it they're they're so far ahead in tempo that they can just base 369 they can even look for a play up here so they're just gonna run the um lucian Ami top probably just match now they're just up a turret look at the items on um jack love as well he is mega chilling like they will and look at the Do I think flex Q challenger means anything? No. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, nothing. Not enough people play flex. I mean, even solo Q challenger doesn't mean anything, bro. Like it means stuff to like other people that don't really like know much about the game, but it's not really an accomplishment to be challenger in this game. They only needed two more. So they committed everyone on the top side of the map, but 369 is not somebody that gets very easily dived alongside the Zinzel. There's a lot of survival. Man, is he gonna get plate top? Is he gonna get another plate top? Jesus. So it was very difficult. So you lost their entire tower down the bot lane, then instantly Jackie Love and Mako pressed B and reset towards the top side to make sure that that one doesn't fall down. And now it's Rift Herald time. You'll see that Jackie has come back with an extra zeal in his inventory compared to the Zeri. And they could very easily play for that fight. You'll see 369 is backing right now, but he's not. Nothing matters there. where, I mean. Look, people still consider me like super dog shit, even though I get, even though I got challenger recently. So like, whatever, bro. I'm, I'm on everyone else's game. Oh, they're on to Shanks. Yeah, they really capitalized on him having no flash. Big play. And they get Harold and they can crash him mid. He knew that Shanks didn't have flash from the previous play that just happened. So this is going to be Reef Herald and very easily now. I think the thing about challengers, it's more of uh, how many games you play rather than like how good you are. That's like the main difference. Jack will have Eve like that because he was going to get polyed if he didn't. 
put them in the mid lane, chunk someone down, that gives you HP advantage, deep into fog of war, and threaten a neutral objective. This particular neutral objective is going to be the next dragon and cream over in the top lane, another threat. Okay, uh, so there's ulti power. advantage right now for AL, so I don't think top esports should contest this Drake. I think they should just play to take top turret and then try to spawn Herald and take mid. Make AL lose stuff for this Drake. With the modern Lucian build, the fact that Shiv, you can just build it on any AD carry. Does mean that Lucian has even a modern more... Lucian build? Well, yeah. Is that a boomer Lucian build? I mean, Lucian, not historically a static Slayer. Shiv champion, sure. right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is not Risco needs it's grinding. Not I mean, it, it used to be, like, now you just have to play way more we go. games. We oh, we're going They're on to Tien. I mean, that was really just weird from Croco. What the yeah, fuck? Now they now they can actually one. contest Drake. Uh, so this guy is all well and good, but only if you actually get to auto-attack anyone. <laughs> Every rank is shit unless it's your own rank, then it's war. I don't know. I mean, maybe like in different servers, it's different. Like maybe Korea, like Korea, it seems like it's just way harder. So like Korean challenger probably means a lot. Depending on when you get it. If you get it early season, it's like, who gives a fuck? Um, yeah. Like NA is just like... It, it, it doesn't feel good getting Challenger, unfortunately. It doesn't feel like you improve to get Challenger. It just feels like you play enough games and you just like hit a win streak and you get it. That's the issue with NA. Like you don't get in better quality games. It's not like, oh shit, I'm playing versus better people now. I better perform. Yeah. Well, Tommy Sports in super good spot now. Now, as soon as he dashes forward with Mako's tag caller's blessing, we already saw the chunk he just did on hope before that second item. He's only getting stronger. One question Did I ever have ranked anxiety? No. And again, I don't think I got to finish my point uh, about Croco's volley bear because the tower was. But I don't really down, think about my rank when I'm playing. You're very. I'm just like, I just go into the game and I just try to play the game the best I can. Out. There's only one way in you ult in or you queue in, and that's it. And that's it. And you're not necessarily tanky enough. You're playing Sundered Sky. So if you do get CC'd midway, if you don't ult fast enough, if you don't get onto your target, you're most likely going to be dying here. Oh, my God. Nice little chunk there. That wasn't even an entire combo. That was just E. Yeah, just E's and W's and blasts a couple of autos out. Not too shabby. And honestly, that is <laughs> that is the way to play Lucian. It's not really the full-on all-in a lot of the time. It's just dashing forward to get these little pokes and culling coming out. When oh, you my get God. The oh, my God. He almost got no one-tapped. If that had a level 11 Lucian, this guy is burning flash. Kill. The e for the poke oh, the difference between Master and Challenger is insane. Opportunity. That would have been gorgeous. Now trying to However, the bottom side. yeah, I guess. Well, I guess. I don't know. I'm probably the wrong person to ask about this shit, bro. Cold blood in Kel's veins right there. Not to ult himself or flash away. Ooh. Jackalove is going to be a huge force. Therefore, oh, you know, the AL have recognized it. Like, oh, I personally oh. feel like Master is a harder ELO to climb than Grandmaster. I think that Master is so flippy because, like, people are so... Like, there's so much variance in that ELO that it's actually harder to climb. But I guess if, like, I think that if you're bad at the game, then Master is... Then, it, then like, GM... Then the higher you go, it just gets harder and harder. Mako had a pretty rough first game of the series, but he but I generally see a lot of like challenger players talk about like low master being like elo hell, which I kind of agree with. Pretty crazy. Tian is just getting his ass beat. Harry continuing this fight, but with Mako and Cream arriving, I don't think that's a fight he wants anymore. Yeah, and if you look on the map for uh, for AL, they're trying to play through their side lanes. They're using the Talia as a tool together with the Volley Bear to try and pressure those side lanes. But I'm not sure there's going to be mats that's been given back to you from that because one way or the other you have this area you're gonna have to take. Player, do you feel like solo queue is more cheese now or back or more cheese back in the day? Potentially you get caught up. I think it's the same. I think that uh, the way that solo queue kind of works is like the using shanks. A lot of the the way that you grind or like the best way to to get high elo is not actually to improve at like all facets of the game and become like if you want to get challenger as a jungler it's probably not best to actually become like a challenger level jungler across like all different facets of the game you find like one champion that you're pretty good at and you like abuse a certain type of strategy that is like a winning strategy and you just do it over and over again okay let's see this this engage croco is no flash croco is no flash he's really killable here they should just kill croco here I mean, it is 4v5 right now for a little bit. Okay, never mind. There's the kill. 
much damage from top. Jackal was kind of sectioned off. Oh, the mantra Q. GG. This game's over, bro. Is that just straight up Baron? Yeah, I think it's straight up Baron. All right, this is definitely oh the cleanest God, game really Top Esports played. They had like one mistake around Drake, but like overall they're playing like themselves. In this particular fight that didn't allow three or four members of AL to get into this fight. His name is Jackalove, by the way. Spoiler alert. Top Esports, of course. With like down, most people that are challenger they're gonna feel free to walk into this or like a lot of people, people that are challenger are not actually just like good at their role. They're good at like one champion and one and strategy or something. Jackalove That's generally how it works. Right here. And as you can see, everyone is piling up on Tian, but look at Jackalove, he's playing on the side. He's not allowing anyone from AL Like, you play like Nunu and you spam gank, or you like, wraps around, you know, like, like there's a lot of like Nunu players that I play against in high low in North America, and their whole thing is like starting objectives. Like, they have like 20 minute bear in every single game, and people aren't ready for it, and like that's one of the strengths of their champion. They just do it every game, and then they end up being challenger. Stuff like that, you know? It's abuse uh, strategy. And especially on this Lucian, he's got 55 games. This is 56th of his career. 71% win rate on this pick. He knows how to snowball a game using that Lucian. As AL, mm. 369 has flash here. Does he have to flash? They need a pick. They need a Doesn't even look like he needs to. He's just out. I mean, that was 369's ult. But to be honest, like, Top Esports doesn't need to contest this. What they should do is they should just make the enemy team sweat for this. Like, Cream should just stay here and poke with Magic Qs, and Jackie Love just goes and hits mid. Like, Top Esports should not fight this unless they get, like, a Giga Chunk or they see people recall it. It's a straight 4v5. But they just harass him here a little bit, make him, make him sweat for it. Jackie Love takes two turrets mid, and then now they're going to rotate to top, probably. They'll probably rotate to top off this and also a tier two tower is being pushed by cream as well al have done so well on their macro like, this is good this is what i wish more teams did trying to brute force things now like understand when it, when you're giving an objective like but you really also gain value off right like slowing them down on it one and game two look so sloppy so uncoordinated they look lost on the map they didn't exactly understand how their composition worked and even when they did they just were not on the same page us players with each other right here this looks so darn clean yeah. no over aggression from the lucianami always covering oh. the bot side come on 369 it's a 2v1 what you got tp from shanks but jackie love is here as well i don't know if it is a just 2v1. dead one it is a 2v1 i take it all back okay. he's just dead <laughs> but it's still fine i mean they got a massive lead Krako is he's bloodthirsty Damn, this feels so bad for al right now they're in this game they realize they lose this game they're just out you can spam games at 49% win rate and reach challenger. Dumb is better understanding of the game, so that's why it feels like if he grinds eventually, he'll... Oh, wait, hold on. Let's see this fight. Oh, two-man bubble, bro. The double bubble coming out from Mako. Shanks is found by TSW as well. Blasco gets him out to safety, but Croco can only tank for so long. Another for Jackie Love as it's four for four on the scoreboard, but it does not feel like it. 6,000 gold lead for top esports. Okay, so 369 going down right here was a pretty big hit because you still have Baron buff on you. You could have potentially pushed another two towers. You still have a tier three, uh, sorry, a tier two that's standing. We'll go top. The uh, of you're just going to find it in a second. Someone hard stuck in a lower rank that is not open minded to look at their own game and try to learn will get challenger if they play a thousand games with the same mindset. No, I mean, obviously, like, that's not the point. The point of saying that it's like it's more of a grind now than it used to be is it's more just that, like, in previous seasons, like, for example we used to gain way more lp like i'm playing right now on eu west and on an account with 80 percent win rate i'm getting like 27 a game even though i've won like i'm already my win rate i've won 30 games and lost eight whereas before you would just gain more, way more lp so they've like made lp gains less so i guess you don't drop as hard but you don't climb as as fast either like like it used to be that you would be gaining like 35 lp a game if you had this type of win rate but now i'm getting like 27 a game so it's just like it's not only is the threshold still really high like challenger is like 900 lp in eu not only is the threshold high but also like the amount of lp you gain is is is, is lower than it used to be that's what it is so that's why it feels like it's more of a grind there is just 
not a very easy way for AL to play the team fights for them because top esports composition doesn't necessarily. Well, there's a bait pick. He's impossible to make win in team fights. That's the conclusion. Okay, bro. Volibear is just a bait pick. HP and then come back again. It's more of a poke composition that you're playing against, yeah. especially with the Karma and the Lucian dashing forward. And this is not something that the Zeri Lulu really like to play into. They like the front to backs. They like the longer lasting team fights. And unfortunately, your Cassante is not strong enough of a tank to sit in front of that Lucian. Your Volibear is literally... I'm sorry to say, but at this point, this pick is useless. Like, there, there is a point in time in the rift for Volibear where the champion cannot necessarily play the game anymore. And I think that that time has been reached 15 minutes ago for this Volibear, yeah. uh, especially with how strong the Lucian is. So unfortunately for Croco, there is just not much he can do to help his team on a more everlasting fight to try and help. It looks better than all the remaining teams in LCS. Do you agree? No, no, no. I wouldn't say that. I think FlyQuest could beat. Ah! I think it would be a good series. I would love to see FlyQuest play against AL, bro. I wish we had tournaments like that, man. That would be like my fucking... That would be probably like the best type of tournaments to me. For me. I would love to see like top EU and NA teams play against like mid-level LPL and LCK teams. I think we would just get such insane bangers, bro. Or like a world that had like 40 teams in it or some shit. I would love that, man. Ian's got two procs of his Q. He's holding his Q3. Here we go, wall coming in. Can they find it? Jack Hilo potentially found, but the tidal wave comes out. The culling is there as well. Okay, Tian's gonna ult here. Does 369 just kill everyone or what? Oh my god, he got a reset. Okay, they're all dead. GG. Alright. Well, rest in peace, anyone's legend. Rest in peace. They're, they actually went with the horror run from being seven and three to seven and nine and missing playoffs that is crazy bro into contention for second place there's one hope left for al and it's in the name one zeri one hope one last man standing four members of top esports no towers left he lost all his health to the tower and he died to a different tower but the nexus will fall and top esports knock al out of playoffs Damn, Ale actually, they didn't make playoffs. That's so tragic for them, bro. That's crazy. I mean, people didn't think that OMG was going to make playoffs, but they did. OMG was such a... a OMG is just not that fun to watch. But they're a better team right now. They got everything together. They were not trigger fingers. They were not playing over aggressive. They were not getting caught. They were playing them up properly. You can see it on their faces. They're not necessarily too ecstatic to have won that series. This should have been a 2 0 clean stomp. And it wasn't. Yeah. It took us all the way to game three. It was uh, a little bit closer than I think any. How's LPL? Is it 1 0 JDG? Did JDG just stomp them? Third and 11th place teams. But at the end of the day, What's going on here? It's a close enough one for AL to, to feel hope, but unfortunately, it's enough for them to get knocked out of the playoffs. We're going to jump into a break and we're going to try and catch up with the third series. Top Esports won their series. Can JDG do it? We'll find out after this. All right. Did I not just click the right thing? I thought I just had it up. Oh, fuck. I clicked the wrong thing. <laughs> Are we in draft soon? Are we in draft soon or what? Or what's going on? Oh, let me see if people want food. I might order some food or something. 
。那么马上要开始的也是我们的第二局的比赛了。刚刚也有提到，在第二局的比赛当中 ，EDG 将会来到红色方。那么两位解说老师认为，在第二局 ，LPL is ended. So future for this league. 调整的点呢？嗯，我觉得第一把的这个阵容，包括比萨这个走向阵明，炸弹人去扛这个维鲁斯，好像扛不住。对啊，扛弱的维鲁斯扛不住。就是你可能没有想到，他还是一个 poke 的维鲁斯，然后他在线上的这个压制力有这么强，所以第二把可能会要。处理一下这个下路的一个对线情况了。是的，就像两边没有换边嘛，他们只能从 BP 上面来调整。就是上把这个维鲁斯有这样的表现，所以我觉得这场对 EG 来说不太能放，而且就算放的话，他也要去找这种可能在对线上可以稍微去抵抗一下的英雄，而不像炸弹人这样可能一味的只能挨打。就现在可能下路需要承担的半位有点多，对吧？你这个卢锡安得办，然后包括复仇之矛。维鲁斯，要不就像你说的，把这个复仇之矛放出来，然后把维鲁斯搬了。对，或者还有一个思路，就是你把下路全搬了，把卡尔玛放出来。呃，在这种情况的话，可能就是京东的中野就,就要歧视了。对，就是你，你想面对一个就是见人就捅的卡纳卡纳维呢，还是说就见人就直接就 poke 你的这个维鲁斯，指定的维鲁斯呢？这是一个抉择。这个就是一个痛苦的抉择。嗯。但是京东这里的话，我觉得还是会延续他们自己的一个打法吧。就是现在他们的打法，我觉得在最近的比赛里面也可以看出来，就是中路还是以功能性为主嘛。是的。然后打野的选一个战士，下路的话就是抢线，然后通过 Ruler 跟 Mist 一个打线，打出优势，然后再去辐射其他路，去帮其他路。然后上路的话，就是能承担一定前排作用的英雄，像奎桑提、乌迪尔、鳄鱼，其实他们最近也都是有玩的。对，就希尔这名选手，我觉得比较让人放心的是。他其实线上，你想他上这么多场比赛，他没有崩过。就是说，他即便面对可能对方的越塔呀，或者说强杀，他处理都很冷静。对，就是我觉得很多就是需要经验的处理，他现在就可以直接的做到了。比如说，那一波当时 EDG 有三个人上来抓他，他就自己直接把线扛在外面就清掉了。对。就但是很多时候这种情况。有些新选手是不太会注意到的，呃，特别是可能年轻的选手，尤其是年轻的上单，如果上来的话，大多数他们可能会选择去我给你操作一下，对，哎，我跟你做一个一换一。但是这样的想法是我永远做这种最合理的，是的，这个我觉得是他比较厉害的一个地方啊。而且面对阿乐，他也没有让阿乐占到太多便宜，所以现在对于 EDG 来说，他们可能有点去难以寻找突破口。因为牙膏其实最近两年的风格一直以来都是非常稳定，就中路我不会拿你怎么样，但是你绝对不会拿我怎么样，就是两边都是正常发育，然后大家去等团队的资源来去打架，所以你现在想从下路对手是不太可能的。然后上路又非常的稳定，中路有没有突破口？现在对于 EDG 来说，嗯，有点难。看一下两边第二盘的 BP 吧。京东还是蓝色方，哦呦，还真是放高高的卡玛了，牙膏直接秒血。那这边鳄鱼赵信先拿下来，就还是觉得这个下路压力太大了，宁愿放高高的卡玛。那来了呀，我打中野，然后下路选个发育的。而且就是 E D G 下路如果给不到足够压力的话 ，Ruler 这个斯莫德有点恐怖的。对，小火龙再次的登场。打野这边要不要选？打野现在有两个斯了。打赵信的话，嗯，反正卡纳维的风格。Game two, J D G vs E D G. What do we end up getting here? Got to remember to turn off YouTube stream when I play solo queue as well. I'm doing his best to fight the sleeper agent allegations. He kind of ran it in the last series, but he's been pretty good. I mean, he's been really good so far in L P L. One of the best players in L P L. 还是说搬上？我有葵，觉得这个希尔这个葵扛的太好了，那就葵跟芒森。I was in a bookstore in Beijing recently, and I found a section of textbooks on the economics of esports. Holy shit, they have textbooks on that? What the hell? Hey, ruler on Smolder. What's the point of playing Smolder though? Like, is Smolder even going to be played? Is Smolder even going to be played on new patch 14.6? And they're already qualified for like extra. I mean, I guess, bro. I guess. Their win doesn't even matter here. He is. 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 He
70 minutes my food gets here. It takes a long time. Jinx pick? Okay. What a sheer play. I feel like this is something where you kind of want like a... I mean, you don't really want Nar into Ari, I guess. It's not that great. But if you go a tank, if you go like Orin, I feel like you're so weak everywhere early. You kind of want somebody that has the ability to beat the Renekton top. Yeah, I mean, this is like an angle, but I just feel like you're so weak early. I think you have to go something like Viego here. I remember when Kanavi Viego was just the fucking goat. This guy had insane Viego win rate in like 2022. I don't think you want to go Graves or Kindred. You don't want to go range champion for Zin generally. Yeah,其实很快啊 你如果处理不当<笑><笑> 那这把京东也是完全换了另一个风格对吧？其实卡纳维也不是很好帮。JDG draft can win this, yeah, for sure. I don't really like JDG's draft. It's all up to uh, it's all up to Kanavi, I think, in this one. Kanavi, you gotta get some shit going.斯莫德都选出来了，这把不可能太快的节奏。而反观EDG的话，肯定是还是要把节奏打出来，至少要在小火龙成型之前嘛，取得足够多的优势。好的，感谢今天到场的观众啊，也再次的提醒大家，这个我们季后赛也。Yeah, I mean the game matters. Yeah, sure. If if top esports lose, then this matters for sure. 包括支持各大的战队，如果都进季后赛的话，也可以把这个门票。I mean top esports didn't look amazing today, and NIP has been looking a little bit better. 季后赛也将会直接开打。是的。Monkey, yeah. That's a fucking monk right there. Sure. Sure really has a 369 champion pool? He does, bro. I mean, I guess he was recommended for this team for a reason. Yo 他们前期可能会尽可能加快一些节奏 
，还是有机会去阻拦一下小火龙的发育的。看了一下这个对线处理，没毛病啊，这些。很细。这个 Q 又没刮到。就刚,刚我一直也在观察这个上路的一个。Playing only Jacks during the Mazda Cup. Yep. 对抗，他这个前两局处理好了，其实这波 W 打了一个。Good W by Sheer here. W. 哎呦 ，Nice. 他这个小孩真厉害哈，这个对线。And get the auto off though. 处理非常的老道，下路的话也给一个 W。但是你看卡纳威这个路线，他这把还是往下刷的。就是 E D G 这把前期如果想针对斯莫德，他基本上就前期找机会来去越塔。但是如果卡纳越往下刷，基本上就断了 E D G 这个念头。反正他这个位置还有机会来抓一下。这波卡纳被摸过来了。送线的时候最危险。Now he's here. Missing 有闪的，闪现直接 A。呃，帮忙打一下狗。Snake 可以往后拉，但是辅助肯定是要被卖了。卡纳比还想多打一个闪。Probably okay. Vampire has to flash as well. Okay. I mean, they end up losing Ghost and Flash on Rel. It's not like the end of the world here. Missing Flash himself. Oh, the reaction from Kanavi there is fucking crazy. By the way, Missing is dead. No, isn't Missing just dead? Missing is no Flash, bro. Isn't he just dead? Monkey's dead though. Okay, what do they do here? Watch Q. Okay. Are they just dead? We got a TP. Help! BP. Oh, it's fucking lost. GG. Bro. Oh nine, oh nine. Just TP is mid during this. We are. We need help desperately here. All right, this game is fucking lost. GG. I'm surprised that actually went so poorly for them. I felt felt like that fight was gonna favor them hard. Let's watch this again. I feel like this is so good. I mean, monkey just failed to flash into the wall. Just a gal gap. You know, nine oh nine. It just TP mid. I guess it's just fucking mid gapu. Did you? Pressure. Well, now Kanavi will just one v five him. I'm really surprised that turned out being so good for JDG. Like face checking when missing was only level two. When lethal tempo Jinx is right there, and you have a Zin fighting. Like, I don't know. I thought that they would just be able to kill and live. JJ still contracted to EDG. Yep. Cheers looking for fruit in the river. You have to walk all the way around. <laughs> that blade is just a different world, bro. Xiaolong被EDE控了下来，这把也说了EDE这个阵容是需要把龙控得很死的，是不能掉任何的龙的节奏。但现在卡纳维这么肥的一个状态，其实他选择余地就很多了，他可以继续刷，也可以去动这个边线。这对京东来说，前期这样的优势够了。哎，阿乐这边感觉到了，嗯，要来防防守自己的这个红 buff。卡纳维这波也不敢动，因为他没闪。
He could have chose any name, but he picked Monkey. Yeah, it suits him pretty well. I can see why he chose it. It's 64 minutes until food is here. Oh, flashed into it. Okay, ends up living. I mean, it relieves a lot of pressure from top. It's good for uh, Shears lane. Still a good gank. Yeah, I'll play solo queue today. We were playing solo queue after. I'm going to probably be spamming Rek'Sai. Probably. Bro, relax, monkey. Jesus, what are we doing? I'm down with the fighting, though. Like, this is like, it makes sense to be fighting here because Kanavi has no ult. And we should be fighting around this red. I missed. The EDG could have definitely pressured this red. Oh. All right, let's see it. Do they kill a ruler? They do. Monkey's alive as well. Okay, kind of big. Does he gal flash on him? He does. Okay, no flash mid. Playable. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, they buffed the fuck out of it. They just made him OP. He was like horrible. He's like worst champion in the game. Terrible design, everything. And then they just made him giga OP for no reason. So now he's just OP. LNG is going to get top six after the awful start. Meanwhile, AL doesn't even get playoffs. LPL is brutal. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, it's like strength of schedule matters so much. So if you're a team like um, like LNG, you played a bunch of hard series. So the fact that you're like two and six doesn't actually matter. It's not like you've lost to the teams that you should beat. So it's not like there was really too much of a question in my mind whether they would ever make playoffs or not. It was more just like, damn, they're worse than they should be. ADG will get one of the grubs here. They'll deny six grubs. Is he going to look for a fight? Oh, Vampire is probably dead. The vampire is so bad, man. He's the worst support in LPL for sure. He is the worst support in LPL for sure. Bro, actually, what the fuck? What, EDG's got some new jerseys? All right. So Ruler's already, so he's already like winning 1v1 versus the Jinx, I guess. Okay. Worst play, yeah, he, he's, I mean, the worst player is generally the worst support. <laughs> like, it's very rare that a, that the worst support in the league is not actually the worst player in the league. Yeah, really just flapped at him. G2 lost the rogue again. Classic G2. 
Wait, what are the matches? I mean, we've got Mad Lions versus Fnatic. You should probably lose that. Who does Rogue play? Rogue plays against SK. Wait, they can actually win. Hmm. Mad SK Giant X um, could all be three and six. Oh, Monkey is just dead. He is just hard inting. Oh, and yeah, this is just how Kanavi wants to play. He just wants to play strong through bot, be the carry on the team. He just wants a weak side top laner. He wants the guy who's picking Orin into Renekton and just even farming. Orin into Renekton, chilling. Hey, he's just dead again. Oh, he's just gonna run it down. He's gonna set the death record in LPL. Yeah, randomly run into somebody called I will dominate did 911 hashtag boom in solo queue or was it a duo queue? It was uh somebody who sniped me, I think. Like the guy hadn't played in eight days, right? Yeah, he hadn't played in eight days and then he played that one game and then he played one more game over the last like four days so i'm pretty sure i got sniped mm. <laughs> Who got first blood? EDG. Did he run it down? He didn't play well, that's for sure. Ruler has flash. Ruler's ult was not good there. That's a Narnia. Oh, monkey's on him. Good ulti for missing. It's under sky gap. Monkey is dead as well. Alright, It's a dry 2-0, bro. It's just a 2 0 这把办了吃的所有的强势英雄，但是放出牙膏的卡玛，卡纳维即将超神的。这样一个破败王也将会证明卡玛这个英雄的价值。刚刚这个小叔也读起来了。嗯。六层，但以这把情况来说还是很好叠的。中路放个峡谷先锋，这边中一塔应该也可以顺势直接推掉。下路这个
Okay, that guy is dead. Oh. 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 Look at the Ornold here. Wait, he actually didn't connect with his Ornold there? I didn't feel like he mistimed it that much. I thought he clipped into the hitbox. Looked weird as fuck. You see that again, actually. Let me see it one more time. See it. Let's see it. Let's see it. I thought he clipped the hitbox here. That's not in the hitbox? With Ornold? I thought that he was actually in the hitbox here. Guess not. I feel like I've seen that shit hit before. Oh. Oh. Too late? No, I think the timing was fine. Like, if he was in the middle, the hitbox would have hit. Uh, ruler has to flash here. He's dead. Oh, we missed that charm. He had cleanse, though, so he's probably not dying even if the charm hits, to be honest. Uh, 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 Great AD carries back. Seems so. Seems like everyone is uh, just banning the other AD carries and these AD carries are broken. Navi is really tanky here. It's fucking lost. Let's go, Baron. It's fucking lost. It's over. Is Anna viable in the jungle now? I haven't played it. It's probably viable, I just don't... I don't really like playing Diana. I think Diana was one of those champs that was like so broken when it was... released. Like, or when they first reworked it into the jungle. Like, I guess season 11 is when they did that. It was so broken when they did that, that playing anything other than that version just feels so bad in comparison to what it used to be. Your top in jungle at the moment to carry in low diamond. I mean, I don't think you need to pick any, like, I carried with Udyr Rek'Sai pretty easily. I mean, I think you can pick anything you're good at and you'll carry through that ELO. Anything that's a carry pick. Indrid, Rengar, Kha'Zix, Diego, Graves. Yeah, Eve, Echo, like, whatever you play, bro. Okay, 
，下路的塔也是岌岌可危啊，清一下，但是被一技能拉走了。I bad myself, but thanks, Nocturne. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you're bad yourself, then it's not like about what you're playing. Like, you don't, you're probably not going to climb by just picking a champion magically. It's not like you're like a low diamond player, but you pick a certain champion, it's going to be like so much easier to win your games. Just play what you're best at. 但是也没有选择强攻吧。哎，京东好稳啊，他们要推三个二塔。对，京东反正也不着急，小火龙的火炮马上也有了，回家再整补一波，再推你一个二塔。就这个阵容还没到强势期，所以先不着急上高地。对。啊，先给大哥升级了一下焚天。没问题啊。然后再给自己升个装备。I mean, yeah, if you're good at Nocturne, you should just play Nocturne then. Just play what you what you're best at. My first mains back in the day. I mean, Shaco. I mean, I played really old dude here. I mean, the thing is, like, it used to be that there was only like four viable junglers in the entire game. Like, it was a Mumu, Warwick, Shaco, and Udyr, and nothing else could actually jungle. Like, the role was just so. It was so hard to actually kill jungle camps that there was only four champions in the entire game that could kill jungle camps. You needed to have like a specific rune set up to do it. You needed to, um, yeah, take cloth armor. You had to path a certain way. It's like everyone who played jungle when I played jungle played those champs. Shivana could. Shivana literally wasn't even in the game. Trundle wasn't even in the game either. Like then Olaf was added to the game, and then Jarvan was added to the game, and then those champions could jungle too. Everyone loses live GG. This is just slaughter, bro. Yes, they just hit bot here. 下路的线也来了，这个时候 E D G 几个人状态都不是很好。嗯，回家补一波出来，下路的水晶都要掉了。下路也掉了，阿乐想留人。入了这边开一过来还要喷你。小龙感觉京东这里也能控下。Right, I mean there was a lot of kills this game. Twenty two kills in twenty five minutes. The winner of this game is a foregone conclusion. I mean if E D G lose early with this comp, they're definitely losing late. 走到草丛里边，等要被秒了，真的可以赢吗？被卡玛练到，阿乐开启大招，这里金东还没有回家补，但是进化，好，奥雷还了，太快了，入了秒杀了，这边的鳄鱼，奥雷还了，哇，队友也跟不上，这个时候确实战力也比较有限吧。零九零这边是开大招溜了，啊，金东再把听牌龙拿下，把卡纳维。疯狂追人，双 C 在打工，拿个小龙。O sevens. You want FF? Yeah, I mean it's definitely an FFable game. I wouldn't mind FFing here myself. Fuck it, bro. Well, Karma, maybe 
，别的人都会觉得搭什么赵信南唱《千绝》，嗯，那卡塔纳维英雄百搭，是玩什么都能搭，嗯，收到了 Monkey。赵信先扫一个大，被奥恩撞起来。Oh, monkey is dead. That's a free reset. All right, take Baron in the game. Honestly, EDG is like inting perfectly hard enough to stall out the game as long as possible. This monkey 确实是完完全全的被教育了，被 gap 了。阿乐继续换塔。Holly to K Corp and getting this key, surely that would be a banger roster, bro. I don't care who's replacing them, but any roster that doesn't have Cabo Shard and Socket on it is a better roster to me. I'm down. Um. 直接交一个 TP， 哦呦，这鳄鱼大绕后，绕这么远，但是过来。All right, all is on the Omega flank. Let's get it, all. 对，京东也很清楚鳄鱼的位置，先不理鳄鱼，直接进攻高地。Ruler no cleanse. Oh wait, no, never mind. He has cleanse back up. GG. 被开，被吐了两下，还是有点痛呢。卡拉维被消耗了一波，再给一个 RQ 砸到了 Vampire， 好痛啊！卡玛，阿乐这边过来排两个眼，溜。中下两路线马上就过来了 ，EDG 马上就不太好去守了。零九零九上了吗？但是队友刚回家呀，直接被入了拿到主宰比赛，不看队友位置的后果。呃，上路的高地塔也掉了，阿乐在旁边直接开大招，再不开大招自己要死了。两段 E 拉下墙，但是大没了。Even if it's Photon and Perks, we just rebuild Vitality. I mean, literally, yeah. I mean, hundred percent. Like Vitality's roster was better than this dog shit roster. Even though they they won one less game in summer, like over the course of that of the two splits that roster had, I mean they made third place in one of the splits. Alright, GG. Solo queue time. Got to turn off the YouTube stream. YouTube friends. It's time to migrate. YouTube friends, it's time to migrate. If you want to watch solo queue, you can watch it here. Oh, nice. I have to reload for no reason. Like, why does this even happen, bro? This happens so often. You can migrate to my Twitch channel.